State had an offensive barrage to take game one, but Washington got good pitching to take the nightcap. Bobo Brayton and the Cougars will try to maintain a share of first place in the Pac-10 Northern Division with a win today, while Ken Knudsen and the Huskies will try to take two out of three from the Cougars. It's coming up next on Prime Sports Northwest. Field on the campus of the University of Washington in Seattle, Prime Sports Northwest brings you packed in Northern Division baseball action. Today, the cross-state rivalry between the Washington State Cougars and the University of Washington Huskies. Hi, everybody. I'm Todd Pickett. Thanks for joining us for this third game of a three-game set after a real Jekyll and Hyde doubleheader yesterday. Washington State won the opener by a score of 25-6 to with a very impressive offensive display, but Washington came back to win the nightcap by a 7-1 score, bouncing back nicely. Dave Haverlo is with us once again, and Dave, uh, despite that first game show by the Cougars, when you look in the stats, it's nothing more than a split in the books. It's nothing more than a split in the books, but these two teams, you don't have to say very much about really what's at stake here. You've got Washington State, the University of Washington, a great rivalry, and the rubber match is today. As Dave said, this is the decider. Let's take a look at the Pac-10 Northern Division standings coming into today, and it's a very important contest for both teams. Washington State trying to maintain at least a share of the division lead after Oregon State swept Portland State yesterday. Meanwhile, Washington, of course, trying to climb up, and important because with Washington State on probation, this league really needs a team other than Washington State to win the Pac-10 Northern Division since there's not a guaranteed spot in the college world series regionals if the cougars win no one might go out of this league that's right they there's no automatic bird tot out of the pac-10 with washington state being on probation and believe me oregon state looks very impressive the folks have had an opportunity i'm sure to watch oregon state in uh, baseball games that we've televised this year so the huskies can't get too far behind oregon state or jack riley they can just go ahead and wrap it up down there Plenty of impressive hitters on both squads here. Let's talk first for Washington State and Kevin Brunstad, who had a big game in the first game yesterday, six RBIs, but got the collar in game two. Well, it's how soon they forget it. Uh, you know, that's what's... A that's what's amazing about this whole thing is the fact that Kevin Brunson had a bad day uh, the second game of the doubleheader, but he wants to have a good offensive showing today, Todd, to make this thing go and make that trip back to the Pullman a smooth one. And in game two, we said Tim Campbell with a complete game, but Randy Jorgensen impressive at the plate with two home runs. Randy Jorgensen's a guy that the Huskies want to get the long ball from him. He really, up to this point, has not hit the ball out of the ballpark with any consistency. He's a former hockey player, but maybe he's going to get the stroke down and drive some in the gaps. There you see him hitting a 17-game hitting streak for Jorgensen and a 429 average during that stretch. Very impressive. That'll put a lot of pressure on our starting pitchers for today's game. For Washington State, it's going to be the left-hander, Rocky Murray, and for the University of Washington, Jamie Day, a very good control pitcher with just two walks in his last 44 and two-thirds innings. Well, both these pitchers will have to hopefully be around to play today, and uh, I'm excited about watching this one. I'm, I want to see the left-hander, Rocky Murray, from Washington State to see what kind of a pickoff move he's got. Also, Jamie Day, that's going to be pitching for the Huskies, Todd. He's got a good running fastball, and I'll tell you, the Cougar hitters better be alive because he's got some movement on that fastball. We'll be back with the starters after this on Prime Sports Northwest. After a strong showing last weekend, the new Rainier draft team is ready to go. They're off. A tremendous start. They're heading into the pretzel turn. They've got them. Here come the chips. And the dip. Incredible. They're setting up for the all important Rainier draft turn. They've got the new Rainier Draft lights. They're ice locker. They're ice locker. All right. There's a Rainier Draft. It's new. It's post time on Prime Sports Northwest. Emerald Racing Today on Prime Sports Northwest brings you same-day wire-to-wire action of every thoroughbred race of the Emerald Racing Association from Yakima Meadows. Emerald Racing Today, Thursday through Sunday at 1130 Pacific, plus special holiday races all season long, exclusively on Prime Sports Northwest. The BBC, Turner Broadcasting, and Timeline Video dare you to take a walk on the wild side with Trials of Life. 
the gripping, award-winning nature video series that exposes the struggle to survive through uncensored, shocking photography. Join acclaimed naturalist David Attenborough for a close encounter with raw nature. See the thrill of the hunt and the strategy of the kill, the relentless drive to continue the bloodline and the miracle of birth. Call now and receive hunting and escaping for $9.99 and see why the law of the jungle is kill or be killed. If it captures your interest, you can get other videos about every other month. Each tape explores the harsh realities of survival in the animal world. Take a walk on the wild side with trials of life. Call now to order hunting and escaping and find out why we call them animals. To order your Trials of Life video, call 1-800-688-5100 or send $9.99 plus $3.23 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. College Baseball on Prime Sports Northwest is brought to you by Rainier Beer, brewers of the Northwest's favorite premium beers. Ready to get things started at Graves Field after a very rainy morning. Bobo Brayton on the third base lines for Washington State, his customary position. And we'll take a look at the starting lineup for Washington State, a lineup that's gone through some changes because of a couple players who were injured yesterday. And the Cougars are having to make some changes around the infield as both the third baseman Ron Naumu and their shortstop Roy Miller were shaken up in yesterday's doubleheader, so they've had to make three changes around the infield positions. And uh, we'll get to that in just a second. Here's the uh, starting lineup now. Cameron in left field. Corky Franklin is at uh, third base. Kincaid, the designated hitter. Brunstad at first. Williamson in center. Borowski right. Hammock, the catcher. Borges at second. And Amble is at shortstop, not third base. And we'll get things started here. Jamie Day on the mound and Ken Cameron stepping in with a 313 batting average, two homers, 14 RBIs. And Jamie Day, four and three record and a 3.23 ERA. And uh, Dave, why don't you talk a little about this uh, young man? Well, he's going to have a good running fastball. You can tell he drops down about three-quarter, Todd, with his delivery right there. And uh, maybe that's one of the reasons that Bobo Brayton has uh, left-handers in the lineup. We'll wait and see. There you see his mark, and as we mentioned, just two walks in his last 45 and two-thirds innings pitched. Strike called by home plate umpire Brian Gooch. Tim Stevens is at first, Phil Jordan at third, as you see some of the numbers for Jamie Day. Not a lot of strikeouts, but a lot of different deliveries. He'll bring the ball from different places. Right, right. Oh, there's a good breaking pitch right there for out number one. Cameron going down. Here we get an opportunity to watch it. There's a running fastball right there on the outside part of the plate. The Cameron didn't go out and get it. It looked like he was trying to uh, pull the ball a little bit, Todd, instead of staying with it and hitting the ball where it was pitched. Jamie Day, a transfer from Spokane Falls Community College. As Corky Franklin steps in, Mr. Utility for Washington State as he moves to another position today. It's amazing the versatility of some of these college athletes. 2-0 to Franklin. Jamie Day from Burlington Edison High School, as we mentioned at Spokane Falls. He had a 12-5 record with a 3.40 ERA in two years there. And a called strike to Franklin for 2-1. We've got a pretty darn good high school coach up there at Burlington, a guy by the name of Jimmy Clem, high school coach up there. Franklin pulling that one foul to 2-2. Two Franklin 322 record coming into the game and uh, usually does pretty well against Pac-10 Northern Division teams with the exception of Washington last year. Franklin uh, hit over 400 against all the other Northern Division schools and 182 against the Huskies who of course took the Northern Division crown a year ago. It's going to be interesting, Todd, to watch the ball game with all the rain that we've had. Balls that are hitting the gaps out here. If the outfielders are able to get any kind of traction at all and run them down. We had a little bit of everything during the doubleheader yesterday. Franklin with a short pop into the wind and a long diving attempt for Reed Johnston will not get to it. And it'll drop as a single for Franklin. 
The wind swirled to every different area of this ballpark yesterday. Straight away center, out into the power alley to left, over to right field. This one was hit into the wind and made it a tough run for Johnston, Dave. Well, the, the uh, you, the ball wasn't hit very deep, obviously. Now you see the jump by the outfielder Johnson out there. You see him die for it. An excellent uh, attempt right there. He kept the ball in front of him. As he gets up, you'll see the mud on his uniform there. But it is real sloppy footing out there. Mike Kincaid, the DH. Kincaid from Tiger to sophomore. The Oregon High School Player of the Year. And takes one on the corner for one and one. Dave's going to be tough against these right-handers. The way he drops down, he's not really over the top. He's not really sidearm. About three-quarter delivery. You get a chance to watch throughout the broadcast. You get a chance to see uh, how much movement he does have on that fastball. A little delayed steal, it looked like, by Franklin as he hesitated part of the way down. and. An easy throw there for Christian Shuey. Guns him down for the second out of the inning. Great play right there by Shuey because the ball was down in the strike zone. There you get a chance to see Shuey here. We'll get a chance right here. Look at how the ball's down. That's not an easy throw by a catcher. But a great tag, and it was somewhat of a delayed steal, it looked like. Somebody missed a signal, you think, Dave? Might have been. Maybe it was a hit and run that was missed. Ryan Rutz with the tag. Meanwhile, during that uh, replay, another pitch missed to Kincaid. So we're at three and one now. Brunstad waiting on deck. <laughs> Full count with that foul ball. Kincaid had a good freshman campaign against the Huskies with a 417 mark, so he well, doesn't mind hitting against them. Oh, doesn't get any easier with the next guy either. A little hopper to Brandon Newell. It got there, good grab by Jorgensen, and it turns out to be a 1-2-3 inning, despite the leadoff, or the rather the single for the number two hitter, Franklin. We'll come back with the bottom of the first from Seattle after this. Let's talk fun. Let's talk lots of Jeep Wranglers. Let's talk loaded. Let's talk price. Enough talk. Go take a test drive. Be sure you get your Jeep Wrangler before someone beats you to it. The Morning News Tribune Sound and Arrows is Saturday, June 12th at beautiful Point Defiance Park in Tacoma. Pick up free race entry information at Olympic Sports, Payless Drug Stores, and Morning News Tribune offices. For 24-hour event information, call 1-800-750-RACE. Imagine spending all day in the sun, kicking back, checking out the scenery, and having a ball. Well, don't dream anymore! With the Miller Lite Pro Beach Volleyball Tour, you get it all! Bottom half of the first inning, as you can see the wind uh, blowing toward left center. Rocky Murray getting set to have his first look at Ken Knudsen's Washington Huskies in the bottom of the first. And the lineup for Washington. Ryan Rutz will lead things off playing second base. He'll be followed by center fielder Matt Wimmer, left fielder Darren Doty, first baseman Randy Jorgensen, designated hitter Jeff Weibel, catcher Christian Shuey, third baseman Brandon Newell will be hitting, and Brandon is playing at third. Brett Newell is playing at shortstop, and Reed Johnston is the right fielder. Rocky Murray on the mound for Washington State. The rest of the Cougar defense. Cameron in left, Williamson center, Borowski right, Brunstad, Borges, Franklin and Amble around the infield, Josh Hammock the catcher, four pitcher Rocky Murray. Murray three and three, 6.81 ERA set to face Ryan Rutz. Dave, one other factor in Washington's second game win that we didn't get a chance to discuss yesterday was stolen bases. The Huskies like to run. Mm -hmm. They're 85 steals for the year. They had eight steals in the second game of the doubleheader wow. yesterday. Well, Kenny Knutson, he wants to try to put the pressure on the opposition, and I'll guarantee you, if the Huskies can get their running game and get some men on, they'll be running again today, even though we had some 
bad weather raining before we uh, before we went on the air here. The uh, infield of course is covered here at Husky Stadium so it's nice and dry out there. Yeah Kenny Knutson he wants to put the pressure on the opposition and you, one way you do that is is by stealing bases. The numbers for ruts down the right field line where Borowski was playing fairly shallow and able to grab it in fair territory. Matt Wimmer is center fielder. Junior from Federal Way. Pretty fair on base wow. average. We see a lot of those for these uh, early hitters, first four or five hitters. Well, you look at some of the averages. Uh, one through five, everyone, or one through four right now in the lineup for today is hitting over 300. Washington is a team batting 295. Washington State batting 288 is a team. Murray grabs that one hopper. And that'll bring up Darren Doty, leading the team in hitting coming into today's game with a 370 batting average. Doty in his senior season and is in every top 10 offensive yep. list for the University of Washington. Uh, this is a man that you can count on right here if you're a Husky fan. Oh, I'm sorry. Defense plays him pretty straight away. Cameron deep in left field. Two and zero to Doty. Randy Jorgensen waiting on deck. Here you see the hockey player, Randy Jorgensen. Watch him swing. When Jorgie gets up there, Todd. Well, I saw him go with a slap shot and a backhander yesterday. <laughs> so might not get a chance this <laughs> inning nope. as Jeff Borges is able to make the play. So Jorgensen lead off the bottom of the second. Washington going down in order in the bottom of the first and at the end of one in this nine inning contest we have no score. And join head football coach Don James and athletic director Barbara Hedges for a friendly round of golf. All in one. Yes, sir. With a twist. The 1993 coaches tour will be hitting a course near you soon. The tour tees off April 26th in Wenatchee, April 28th in Everett and April 30th in Portland. Call 543-0540 or 1-800-AUW-ALUM for information and reservations. Then come on out and hit them with your best shot. Yes! Make this the winter you learn to ski better with tips and techniques from ski's top teaching pros. Found in this all-new Ski Better Now video, yours free. Call this toll-free number today, and Ski Magazine will send you this video free with your paid subscription of only $11.94. Enjoy a full season of Ski Magazine, America's top-rated magazine for skiers. Beginner or expert, reach new levels of ability. Call today to get Ski Magazine, plus your free video, and Ski Better Now. Say who we are, and you get this, with your paid subscription to this, Popular Science, at a very special rate. 1606 off the cover price and this handsome tote free if you grab the bargain now call toll free 1-800-962-7800 12 issues are 1394 an instant tv discount of 53 percent off the newsstand price to save and claim your gift call 1-800-962-7800 one 7800 top half of the second inning Kevin Brunstad, Jeff Williamson, and Don Borowski for Washington State. Here's some of the pregame activities at Graves Field today. <laughs> and uh, we had much the same during the doubleheader yesterday, rain on and off. And it's amazing how quickly this field has dried out again, Dave. The infield in pretty good shape. Yeah, you get a chance to see the uh, infield. Randy Jorgensen over there for the Huskies. Really the wettest spots are at the corners as Kevin Brunstad steps in. Good play by Brandon Newell guarding the line. Brandon hadn't played perfectly. You get a chance to watch right here. Brunstad hits the ball very well right there. He went down and got that ball, but Brandon Newell just has to make a couple steps over to the third baseline. There you see the young man from up north. 
out of the Burlington or um, Nooksack Valley area. I know you had a chance to talk to Brandon before the game today as Williamson yeah. steps in. Talking about the doubleheader, Brandon said, uh, you, did, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't see game one, did you? <laughs> Brandon, Brandon was a starting pitcher, but several pitchers went through that contest. And here's the other half of our hockey connection today. You mentioned Jorgensen, mm -hmm. Jeff Williamson. And Newell is there with another stab. That's his third grab here in uh, an inning and two thirds and comes up with that one. Williamson, part of a uh, national championship tier two hockey team in Spokane. And we'll watch Brandon Newell rob it. You get a chance to watch Brandon Newell. He had one on the air. He uh, gets one on the ground. I think Bobo is probably going to go back and tell those Cougars maybe we should start hitting it to somebody else and pick on somebody else. First pitch to Don Borowski is low. Just looking here, we talked about all those hitters over 300. You go seven deep mm -hmm. almost before you get somebody below the right. 300 mark. It's, of course, the Pac-10 uh, never been known as a real strong pitcher's league anyway, no. especially down south. Nope. Two and one to Borowski. Well, they got it a little bit further to the left, but Brett Newell's there this time, and Washington State goes down in order in the top half of the second. Nothing across, and we'll go to the bottom of the second inning for Washington. It'll be Randy Jorgensen to lead things off. We'll be back on Prime Sports Northwest. From the achy breaky to the tush push, country line dancing is sweeping across America like an Oklahoma dust storm. And now you can learn America's most popular new dances right in your own home with this great new video from Quality. Meet Diane Horner. Diane's unique teaching method will have you country line dancing in minutes. It's easy and fast. In no time at all, you'll be doing the electric slide, slap leather, honky tonk stomp, tush push, and of course, the achy breaky. We start with simple individual dance steps and patterns at a slow beginner's beat. Then put them all together into the full dance. Finally, we show you the complete line dance, repeating the patterns over and over so you can practice right along with us. Order now and we'll send you a second hot country video, country partner dancing, absolutely free. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-641-4499. Order today and receive Country Line Dancing and Country Partner Dancing. Two videos for $19.95 plus $4 shipping and handling. Call now or send check or money order to the address on your screen. 4-5-6 for Washington in the bottom of the second. First baseman Randy Jorgensen to start things out. Jorgensen, as we mentioned, with the 17-game hitting streak. Two for three in the second game yesterday, including two long solo home runs that got up into the jet stream. Well, I think if you can get one up in the air here, the ball will certainly carry. The thing about Randy Jorgensen, as you watch him, the thing that's impressed me in watching him play uh, college baseball, Todd, is this, that he stays in well against the left-handers. He keeps that lead shoulder, although he gets plunked right there. I don't think it was intentional, but Jorgensen let him know that he wasn't too happy, letting Rocky Murray know he wasn't too happy with that. And we're going to get an opportunity to watch the fastball run up and in on him right there. But Jorgensen has really got some nerve there. You see him get plunked again. But uh, he's a tough kid. Randy Jorgensen is. He'll camp out on first. Eyes still locked on pitcher Rocky Murray. And Jeff Weibel will step in. Senior from Paul's Bow, where he was an All-Stater at North Kitsap. I don't think that, uh, I don't think there's much of a threat that Jorgensen's going to try to run here. Uh, I was noticing here that uh, Jorgensen has only been hit. That was the second been time hit, he's been hit plumped. by pitch. Yeah, six of eleven in the stolen base category. A left-hander out there in the hill, that's going to slow down some of the thefts. Of that was part of the talk yesterday after uh, 
runners were able to get a pretty good lead at times with a right-hander on the hill for Washington State that uh, Bobo Brayton might come back with a left-hander today anyway. Murray was kind of scheduled in the rotation, although that can change, of course. And uh, use that and the left-handed advantage to try to keep the Huskies uh, a little bit closer to home. Well, I don't think that right there was Rocky Murray's best move. He flipped over to first base there. You see Ken Knutson, head coach of the Huskies. That wasn't a very good move by the left-hander for the Washington State Cougars. Washington now raising its average to better than two stolen bases a game after that double header. <laughs> Think that man right there hadn't seen a lot of baseball? Bobo Brayton? Yeah, it's interesting going through the record books now with uh, Ken Knutson in his first year. Mm -hmm. Despite the 16 years Bob McDonald spent, this will be the fifth Husky coach that Bobo Brayton has gone head to head against. That's amazing. That tells you. That is amazing. Number four on the all time active coach list and number six on the all time winningest list in college baseball coaching history. I wonder how many years in a row people have said, well, how many more is Bobo going to be around for? Since before you or I were yeah. around these parts, probably. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like every year. I remember. A while back, people said, well, with John Olrood, if he goes into the pros, that'll probably be the last year for Bobo. And boom, boom, boom. You know, Scotty Hatterberg, well, that'll probably be last year for Bobo when Hatterberg leaves, or Aaron Seeley, or something like that. And here's Bobo. And the thing that's uh, unique about Bobo Brayton is he's been on virtually every committee that's imaginable. They got him. There's a pickoff by Hammock and making the tag Brunstad for a minute. I was afraid that uh, he might not get a chance to make it as he kind of had to reach around behind. But Hammock with a good gun. And Jorgensen gets picked off. Todd, I'm not sure that there wasn't a hit and run on right here. Because Jorgensen didn't get a big lead. There you see now he's caught out in no man's land. Now he, he waits for the first baseman to make the swipe with the glove and tries to reach back around. Jorgensen turned around as if to say, hey, I got the left hand in there soon. Now that might have been a delayed steal or a hit and run. But watch Jorgensen reach around, try to go to the corner and get that hand back in there. So it turns into a double play for the Cougars with the strikeout to Weibel and Christian Shuey up at the plate with a 1-0 count as you get a look at Josh Hammock. It's uh, just to go back to uh, Brayton, as you said, really kind of an originator of a lot of college baseball. Folks who are familiar with these two schools uh, know that, but a lot of people don't know, for example, wearing helmets, mm -hmm. the College World Series format, the expansion right. to 32 teams, a lot of those things. And as you said, if there's been a committee around, yeah. he's been on it. Of course, that helmet that we saw on Bobo Brayton's head, that's a, a trademark of his. A lot of people aren't aware of it, but he's got a plate in his head. That's why, or that's why he wears that helmet. There you see Bobo. There's not too much you can do to trick him. Pulled foul by Shuey. And it'll be two and two. I got a feeling that ball boy is going to be very active today. There are, there are plenty of them, that's for sure. Yeah. Why do left-handers wear their hats so goofy? Todd, I never have been able to figure that out. Well, there, you ever notice there, that? There's a three-word commercial phrase that I'm really tempted to use as a response without giving them a plug, but... Uh, oh. <laughs> <you know. laughs> I can't give you a real good answer on that one, Dave. Uh, I have never in my you know, life. I mean, if anybody should know about characters and why guys do what they do, <laughs> I'd, I'd defer to you on that one, I think. Uh-oh. 2-2 two, two up, and the wind carrying it, but Cameron will take a couple steps back to the track, and unlike yesterday when uh, balls were flying out, that one didn't quite get enough of the jet stream and it's a one two three inning for Washington after Jorgensen was hit by the pitch and picked off so we're scoreless through two in Seattle. Ice Lager Draft and Draft Light, found in all the cool places. 
VA Inside Stuff's definitely not your normal TV show. Now, get ready for a new jam with a Not Your Normal magazine. NBA Inside Stuff magazine puts the NBA on the printed page and in your face. Read NBA Inside Stuff magazine. It's fun, it's exciting, and it's definitely not your normal magazine. Order all four issues of NBA Inside Stuff magazine for $13.99 and receive the NBA Inside Stuff hat brought to you exclusively by AJD. Call 1-800-NBA-DUNK. What's in the name? All downtown, all Frederick. The people at Frederick know there is a lot in a name and work hard to make certain you know it too. That's why so many people come back to Frederick again and again. The Frederick family of dealerships just south of the Space Needle between Battery and Bell. Frederick invites you to check out Cadillac's new lease plan for 1993. See what it means to have the Frederick name behind you. Top half of the third inning, seven, eight, nine hitters for Washington State. Catcher Josh Hammock to start things off, followed by second baseman Jeff Borges. <laughs> Shortstop Chad Amble. He'd never know we had rain here today. Nope. Sun peeking out a little bit now. Gray skies turning to blue as we get set for the top of the third. Hammock, uh, another hitter over the 300 mark. Two and zero to him now. Redshirt freshman from Fall City, Mount Sai High School. Ooh, good pitch. That's what you like about yeah. David. He spots the ball, puts yeah. it in good places, right? Well, that pitch right there—that is, if you can keep the ball down there, son, you're going to win a lot of ball games at any level you're pitching at. See, so he's got the running fastball. As we get a chance to watch him, he run the fastball in. It kind of tails in on the right-handed hitter, and then he comes back with that breaking ball away. It makes it pretty tough to hit. There's that sinking running fastball right there, Todd, that out of the strike zone. Well, we talked about Day's control, so unusual to see him give up the walk, but he does that with Hammock aboard. Jeff Borges will be the batter. Borges appeared uh, in the first game of the doubleheader victory yesterday for Washington State. Good pitch. Well, how's Washington State going to play it? Are they going to try to bunt him over here? Gonna hold that runner, I'll bet. Now that was not the best move right there. That was just, I think, what Day was attempting to do right there was just try to lull the runner to sleep over there. George is with a nice placement on that one, and it may go for a base hit. Nope, a good fielding play by Day to get back over for the flip. Fine ability by Jamie Day to recover that when he was kind of headed in another direction. Defense it nicely. Well, Day breaks in straight off the rubber here. Great bunt right there. As he pushes the boards, pushes it, trying to get it. See, if that would have been just a little bit farther, I don't think Day could have run it down. The sacrifice is uh, executed, and there's a man that's responsible. Jeff Borges, great bunt. Junior Chad Amble, who's getting the start at shortstop today calling time at the plate. Only a 207 average for Chad. 1993 has been a little tough on him. Just 29 trips to the plate for Amble. A reminder, this program is authorized under television rights granted by the University of Washington. Any publication, reproduction, rebroadcast, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Prime Sports Northwest is prohibited. 0-1 oh to Amble. Day looking the runner back and almost <laughs> made the throw to second. He was very close to taking that lead runner out instead, but Amble will go down 1-3. Hammock almost strayed too far. I thought that Day, Day initially wanted to go ahead and make the throw back to second. And we're going to get a chance right here. See, right there, he's got him. If he makes a decision, and for whatever reason, 
he elects to go ahead and get the out. But I think Todd that if he would have thrown a ball there, you see the big lead out there. Plenty of room, Dave. and Rutz was there in time, as yeah. you said. I just don't think Dave was ready to pull the trigger. Leadoff hitter Ken Cameron watches the first one sail outside. Started the game with a strikeout. Cameron yesterday was four for nine in the doubleheader, scored five times, had a home run, two RBIs, walked twice, struck out twice. Very busy afternoon. Tell you what, you have that kind of day, you might want to look for wallets underneath the bleachers or something like that. You might find one. <laughs> or take a metal detector with you, right? Yeah. That one will roll foul down the third baseline. And again, day ahead of a hitter at one and two, and that's something he's been able to do fairly consistency here in the first few innings. Well, that's one of the reasons I think that the defense has played so well, especially Brandon Newell at third base, is because day has been around the plate. And when you're around the plate, it keeps those infielders and outfielders on their toes and anticipation of the ball being hit to them. Now, Shuey's going to go out there. You see Brandon Newell at third, but there, Shuey goes out, and all they're doing right here. You're just making sure that everybody's on the right page, especially with the man down at second. You want to make sure that the signs are, everyone understands exactly what the pitch is called. And should we just remind him he's ahead of the hitter. So let's see if he wastes one. Looks like he wants to go inside with one right here. Shaden Cameron a little bit to the off field, and Day does miss inside to even the count. There you get a chance to see the infield and outfield. Pretty good defensive alignment right there. I doubt that Cameron can hit one over the left fielder's head. Nobody out there is a hammock. Scampers back to second. Into left center. Wimmer trying to give chase won't get to it and. Uh, Davey didn't put it over the left fielder's nope. head, but he did get it over the center fielders, and Washington State will be on the board. Cameron with the stand-up double as Hammock comes across to make it 1-0. Well, that was just a perfectly hit ball by Cameron right there. It was in the gap. Center fielder and left field for the Huskies got a pretty good jump on the ball. We can get an opportunity to watch it again. Ball on the outside part of the dish right there that Cameron goes and goes out and gets it. And you can see the center fielder, Wimmer, in hot pursuit. And that ball carried a little bit farther than than uh, than I thought it would. It's what the wind has done all weekend here at Graves Field. If you get it in the right spot and the wind's going that way, you've got extra bases at least, if not a trot around the plate. Corky Franklin singled, was thrown out on either a delayed steal or a missed hit and run attempt at second on a fine throw by Shuey. Tell you what, both catchers have shown they can throw the ball with some zip on it and some accuracy. Pitch out and the long throw again on a hop by Shuey. Cameron wisely back. Shuey picking one off that fashion in the doubleheader yesterday. I'll tell you See what, what Santiago's done to everybody. They're <laughs> all throwing down. <laughs> That's right. What I was thinking about though, Todd, was uh, I'll bet Dave wishes now that when that ball came back to him, that perhaps he would have had went ahead and made that throw. Very good point. Days. Taking care of the lead runner. Yep. yep. We'd still have goose eggs on the board right now if he had done that. Time called at the plate. Brian Gooch racing out of the way, calling time as Franklin will step back in now with a 2-1 count. Good look at our home plate umpire. I've seen a lot of players get injured on a deal like that. Sometimes a pitcher will not go ahead and throw the ball. Line, but Brett Newell, who took about a step and a half with the delivery of that pitch, was right in the perfect spot. But Washington State gets on the board in the top half of the third inning. As Washington State gets a run on one hit, there were no errors and a man left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the third. The Cougars on top one nothing. Oh, jeez, what a day. Oh, I bet mine was worse. Oh, hey, hey, we forgot to return the video we rented last night. Oh, you bring it back. You picked it out. Only because I didn't have the one you wanted. Yeah, but you still liked it. No, I didn't. I hated it. Well, I hated it more. Well, yeah, okay, well, I returned that stupid movie you rented about the The worst part about renting a movie is having to make a special trip to take it back. With pay-per-view, you never have to take anything back. Why rent it? You've got it. 
renting movies is cheap. Honey, did you return the movies to the video store? Um... Don't worry, I'll be going by the video store tomorrow or Thursday. No, darling, I'll return them on my way to work in the morning. Maybe they won't charge us for the extra day. Honey, look, I forgot to return the tapes, and my plane leaves in 20 minutes, but I gave them to a cab driver named Larry. Renting and movies is cheap if you manage to get them back on time. Otherwise, pay-per-view is a lot cheaper, and there's never a late fee. Why rent it? You've got it. Bottom of the third inning and the bottom of the order for Washington now. Third baseman Brandon Newell will start it off. Shortstop Brett Newell to follow. And right fielder Reed Johnston set to face Rocky Murray. This man won't get cheated. 267 average. He'll swing hard. And don't be fooled by that uh, pitcher's indication after his name there on the batting average. Uh, yeah. Doesn't hit like a typical pitcher. <laughs> no. That's true. There's folks around the Northwest have seen plenty of hitting pitchers who played other positions in their time in oh, collegiate yeah. ball. So Brandon in a hole quickly, though. John Olrood, does that ring a bell? With yeah, I was going yeah. to save that for a little later, but uh, oh, okay. talking about second generation <laughs> players at Washington State with Brunstad coming up soon. But, uh, well, how about Olrood? We might as well. 435 now. I'll tell you what, he had to be the hottest hitter coming out of spring training. Baseball scene in a long time. He just tore it up. He continued right on. Two and two to Brandon Newell now. That'll go toward the gap. Williamson having to backpedal a little bit. Got a good break on the ball and makes the grab. Out number one, but that is a pretty, that can be a real tough play right there for an outfielder, especially if the ball is hit directly at him. Although on this one here, we're getting an opportunity to see it's hitting the gap a little bit. Good extension by Brandon. He went down and got that ball, kept his head down well, but so you'll hang with him. He's out number one. Just a small circle route on that one. Brett Newell step up. Spots that one outside. Brett up to 306 average. That one out of play. Johnston waiting on deck. You know, the other thing that's been fun this year, you talk about Olerud, is just to, for both these schools, now get a little alumni matchup. You've got Blowers against Olerud when Seattle and Toronto square off. And yep. kind of fun seeing players from both teams. You bet. It. Trickling back to the screen, and two and one now to Newell. Tell you what, Kevin Stocker. Very, uh, I don't know if he's up yet with the big club in Philadelphia or is he down in AAA? No, he'd gotten but... sent back down. I don't think they'd pulled him back up yet. Kevin from Central Valley High School over in Spokane. Been him for a while. Doing real well in that organization. Yeah. Three one to Brett Newell. And we'll go full. You get an idea of what goes on sometimes in the locker room or in the dugout, I mean. A little bit different looking dugouts than uh, about this time yesterday when it was crooked numbers by the bunches. Borowski underneath this one. And two gone. Well, what have you seen with Rocky Murray so far that uh, pleases and displeases you, Dave? Well, I, I'll tell you what, Todd. He's got a good running fastball. I haven't seen a real sharp breaking ball that he's throwing for strikes, but he sure does have that typical movement from a left-hander when he throws that fastball and watch it run away from the right-handed hitters. Looks like he's very composed out there and doesn't get too excited about anything. Typical left-hander. Reed Johnston with the first ground ball in the last couple innings and he's going to be able to beat it out as the throw from Amble not there in time. It'll go as an infield single in the first hit of the game for Washington. Well, that was a good job right there. Good chance to watch again as Johnson pulls the ball deep in the hole at shortstop. Amble comes over third baseman dies for it. Amble comes up with it. 
Makes a strong throw, a quick release. It's just a little bit up the line. And there you see Johnston going in with the first base hit for the Huskies. Good job by Brunstad coming off the bag instead of, as, as some right. younger first baseman will do, hang on there in vain and watch the ball sail somewhere. Johnston takes off immediately. Hammock's throw on a hop. I think that was just a situation where Johnson went on first movement by the pitcher. It's his fifth stolen base in as many attempts this year, and uh, much like yesterday, yep. off and running. There he goes. He was just go on first movement. Strong throw by Hammock. Unfortunately, he's on the wrong side of the bag as it gets away from the covering second baseman Jeff Borges, but not deep enough for Johnston to advance to third. But Reed just apparently went on first movement. Maybe somebody saw something or knows something. Murray didn't pay a lot of attention he to sure him. He sure didn't. No. He'll take a good lead at second now. Called strike to Ryan Rutz. And it's one and one. Rutz flying out to right. <laughs> Murray will step off the rubber now to call time. Ryan's a pretty tough man to strike out. Coming into the ball game, he's only struck out 11 times over 120 at bats. That will skip away from Hammock, but not quite far enough as he got there in a hurry. I got that Difficult a basket ball. catch there. Yeah. Fortunately for the Cougar fans who are in attendance here, you see the ball doesn't skip away. <laughs> Take that ejector button out of your glove, son. Hammock does a good job of running that one down. Johnson didn't get a real good jump on it. Real good defensive catcher. The book on him is that to right now his arm may be his uh, biggest liability. Really? Johnston kind of bluffing back at second as that one's the inside, and it's 3-1 now. By the way, not only is Johnston perfect in stolen base attempts this year, he's perfect in his career now, 11 for 11 in stolen base attempts for the Huskies. I think that's called knowing when to run. That's right. Picking your spots. I don't know if we can get Randy Jorgensen to agree that uh, Hammock doesn't have a very good throwing arm. <laughs> well, you know it's shorter to the corners. Oh, right? yeah. Off speed, and there's a little bit of a breaking ball for you. That's the best breaking ball we've seen right, uh, right up to this point right here by Murray. Good chance to watch sharp breaking ball right here down in a good location. Looks real tempting. Comes across the zone there, but... By the time it got up to the, the dish and passed home plate, it was down on the ground. Good breaking ball by Rocky Murray. Full count to Rutz. He jumped on that breaking ball nicely. Cameron up with it. Kind of hesitated with the throw, and on five hops, it finally gets to the plate. And Johnston's across to tie the game at one. When Cameron first came up with that one, Dave, I thought he had a chance to make the throw at the plate that give Rutz the single in the RBI. The only thing I wonder is uh, the left fielder came up with it, Cameron comes up with it, Cameron comes up with it, if perhaps it was a little slippery, a little wet as it rolled out there. You get an opportunity to watch it here again, but that's a soggy outfield out there. And Cameron doesn't really come up and, and make a real strong throw. I thought we'd perhaps have a closer play at the plate. As Johnson slides in with the tying run, you see Ryan Rutz. Over 19th there. RBI of the season for Rutz, and we're tied at one. And Matt Wimmer, Back. 0 for 1 up at the plate. I wouldn't be too surprised if Rutz doesn't have the green light here. Well, they got him now. Brunstad with the throw, and the tag applied by Chad Amble, and that'll end the inning, but not before Rutz delivers the first run of the contest for Washington. They get a run on two hits. There were no errors. No runners left on base. And each team scoring in the third were level at one.
Husky fans, join head football coach Don James and athletic director Barbara Hedges for a friendly round of golf. All in one. Yes, sir. With a twist. The 1993 Coaches Tour will be heading a course near you soon. The tour tees off April 26th in Wenatchee, April 28th in Everett, and April 30th in Portland. Call 543-0540 or 1-800-AUW-ALUM for information and reservations. Then come on out and hit them with your best shot. Yes! Introducing the new Q. Introducing the new Q. The new Q. 45. Huh? Let me know when you're ready. We're rolling. Yeah, what? Some of the clouds here in Seattle. It actually looks a little bit better than that, though, if you get a general scan of the uh, sky. In fact, actually, uh, Light blue off to center and right as we get set for the top of the fourth. The DH Mike Kincaid to start things out. Grounded out to Brandon Newell at third in his first at bat. <laughs> Brett Newell, the backhand grab. Skips by. And it skips away <laughs> from the catcher, Shuey, who uh, tried to get to it. Go as a throwing error on Brett Newell. And the two base error puts Kincaid in scoring position. I thought Shuey was going to get an opportunity. We'll get a chance to see it again. There's a ball hit. Newell comes up with a strong throw, but it's in the dirt, and Jorgensen can't pull it up. Now, watching the bottom of your screen, you'll see the catcher come running through here. Well, I guess maybe we're not going to get an opportunity to see it, but the catcher was actually trailing on that one. Shuey was going to play it off of the tarp, which is very tight, got a good bounce from it, but it skidded the other direction, and as he tried to jam on the brakes, his feet went out from underneath him. And Kincaid skidded into the second and brings a, a second chuckle from Dave, who uh, enjoyed watching Shuey go the first time, I think. Well, it looked like a hockey goalie down there. He's got all that equipment on him. Brunstad with a 0-1 count, 0 for 1 in the game. As we mentioned, Brunstad, another one of the second generation players for Washington State, as you see Kincaid out. I wonder how that makes Bobo feel when, you know, well, I coached your dad. Yeah. <laughs> Dad's been here watching Kevin play this weekend. Played in 65 and 66. Brandon Newell checking the runner, makes the gun. He breaks late, the throw back across. In time, Bobo Brayton there to appeal that one, and it looked to me as though he were underneath the tag that time. You can see yeah. Bobo talking to Phil Jordan about it. Yeah, I, I would. I think Bobo's got a legitimate beef right here. Bobo will get his money's worth anyway. But I thought he had a legitimate beef. Brandon Newell, third baseman for the Huskies, did a great job of checking the runner before he throws it across the diamond. And here's a little ground ball coming up here to third base. Now watch Newell. He checks the runner, holds, holds, and there's a strong throw. Now watch Jorgensen, the first baseman, throw back across the diamond here. It's a high throw. There goes Brandon up for it. There's a slide. You make the call at home, folks. Now here, we're going to get it from another angle. Watch this right here. See that left hand is in there. Although the umpire was in perfect position. Got to give him credit for that. Well, the famous 5-3-5 five, five, yeah. uh, twin kill there. <laughs> Good job by Jorgensen uh, coming up off the bag there in a hurry, too. Yep. To the right side of the infield, Jorgensen giving chase, but it'll be the catcher, Shuey, making the call. And Washington State gets the leadoff man, but has him killed as well, and the Cougars go down in the fourth. Still tied at one between Washington State and Washington. Pac-10 baseball continues on Prime Sports Northwest. After a strong showing last weekend, the new Rainier draft team is ready to go. They're off! A tremendous start! They're heading into the pretzel turn. They've got them! Here come the chips. And the dip. Incredible! They're setting up for the all-important Rainier Draft light turn. They've got the new Rainier Draft lights! They're ice locker! They're ice locker! <laughs> All right! Here's a Rainier Draft. 
Prime Sports Northwest wants you to get ready for the playoffs. Review the season and preview the playoffs. Join host Kevin Calabro and Eddie Johnson for the Sonics Playoff Special. Kevin Calabro and Eddie Johnson put you into the game plan Wednesday, April 28th at 8 Pacific. Brought to you by Rainier Beer and Payless Drug Stores. It's post time on Prime Sports Northwest. Emerald Racing Today on Prime Sports Northwest brings you same day wire to wire action of every thoroughbred race of the Emerald Racing Association from Yakima Meadows. Emerald Racing Today, Thursday through Sunday at 11.30 Pacific, plus special holiday races all season long. Exclusively on Prime Sports Northwest. You're watching Northwest College Baseball on Prime Sports Northwest, home of the Pac-10. And two teams who've called the Pac-10 home for a long time, Washington State and Washington, bottom of the fourth. Matt Wimmer to start things off for the Huskies, the center fielder grounded back to the pitcher in the first. Matt with a 344 average currently. The updated to the moment average. Rocky Murray missing. Murray one strikeout, one hit by pitch through the first three innings of play. If you're Bobo Brayton, Dave, any concern at all that the Huskies are not putting the ball on the ground much with Rocky's pitching? Oh, I don't think that that's a concern right now. Borowski calling for this one and makes the grab. As long as they can keep him in the ballpark, Bobo will be happy. As long as they hit to right into a wind that's blowing to left, that'll keep him happy as well. Darren Doty. One of those guys who can take it out in a hurry. Grounded to second in the first. Murray's curve looking a little sharper there, Dave. We see that breeze we talked about. Yeah, you get a chance to see the flags. Straight center field out there. Oh. A check swing. Franklin knocking it down, but can't grab the handle, and it'll go as an error on Corky Franklin. I think old poor Corky, he just got caught between a rock and a hard place. There's a little excuse me swing. There you see that. <laughs> it's like a little half wedge. All kind of gobbled up on Corky right there. Not much you can do, son. Franklin filling in for the injured Ron Naumu at third. Of course, Corky showing why he was the Pac-10's utility selection on the Northern Division first team last year. Boy, that's nasty. You, last time Jorge was up, he gets plunked in the shoulder by a fastball. Rocky Murray comes back. The next time he faces him, starts him off with that breaking ball. Here's the curve ball I was talking about right there. Great pitch. Super pitch. Lock that leg up mm -hmm. a little bit. Through the hole. Borowski there. Doty will put the brakes on at second. Is uh, Borowski up with it quickly? And two on for Jeff Weibel. Jorgensen with the third hit of the game for Washington and extends the hitting streak to 18 games. Boy, Randy does it. He does a great job of keeping that lead shoulder and rolls that top hand over. You roll that top hand over like that, you're not going to get many balls out of the ballpark via the home run, but you're going to hit a lot of line shots at someone. Entered the game to Jorgensen with a 356 average, so he just continues to hoist that. Weibel, a strikeout victim, the only one of the game for Washington so far, takes that one outside. Weibel with five homers, so again a chance to get some numbers up for Washington in, in a hurry. And he's ahead in the count at 2 0.
Weibel I noticed down here he's tied with Jorgensen for the team lead in home runs. Both players have five home runs. Both infielders trying to keep Doty honest at second. Jorgensen is at first. One gone here in the bottom of the fourth. Runners almost went that time. Yep. They took a jump. Shortstop Amble was standing on the bag as the pitch was delivered. There was a hole big enough for a truck that time for Jeff Weibel. You get a look at Joe Ross in the third base coaching box for Washington. Kurt Wright, the first base coach for the Huskies. That's Doty at second. Jorgensen's at first. Good block that time by Hammock as we go to three and one. Yeah, three and one. This might not be a bad situation right here to make something happen. Maybe you might want to start your runners on a three one count here. And they do. Weibel hoisting it foul toward the Washington State dugout and it'll go out of play. Bouncing ever so close to passing cars in the nearby street. Looking down here, Weibel does have a tendency to strike out quite a bit. He has coming into this ballgame 34 strikeouts and 106 at bats. Raised it to 35 there, so one out yeah. of every three times. Right. But Knudsen showing faith in him, starting the runners on that 3 1 pitch. Rocky Murray, I think he's thinking along the same lines that we are as far as holding those runners. Full count to Weibel, the runners break, and he fouls another one off. This one will clear the street on the fly this time, so. A little less agony as the kids go chasing out. They just got the first one and they <laughs> scrambled goes. them right back for the second one. So As you can see that uh, traffic comes quite close to the ball yard here on the right field line. One out again in this inning. And we'll keep an eye on the runners again on the full count pitch. That time they weren't running. Nobody moved. Situation like this, Randy Jorgensen over at first, the, the runner for the Huskies, he can't get too quick a lead over there. I've seen a lot of players get picked off in a situation here where the first baseman will key off of that left handers out there in the mound, key off his lead foot. Let's see what kind of jump they get. Doty scrambling back that time as Amble's doing all he can to keep Doty from ambling <laughs> too far off the second base bag. And again, a full count pitch coming. Weibel really chased one there. That was definitely ball four as the fastball ran up and out of the strike zone. That's a big strikeout right there for Rocky Murray. Second one of the game for Rocky, and both of them have been at Weibel's expense. Christian Shuey will step up. Shuey sent one deep to left, but it was grabbed on the track by Ken Cameron to end the second inning. Shuey with a couple men in scoring position now. If he takes one to the fence, and at least one, Doty out at second waiting for a base hit. Murray with another good slow curveball there. Was a good curveball. Murray's in this inning, at least, has shown great command of that breaking ball. Off the end of the bat, and Murray ahead of him, 0-2. Brandon Newell waiting on deck. 1 1 deadlock here in the bottom of the fourth. <coughs> Kenny Knutson's one of the few coaches I can remember at the collegiate level that likes to be in the dugout, not out of the third base coaching box. The reason that is, he explained it to me a while back. He likes to be anywhere he can talk to his pitchers and catchers, Todd. One of the reasons is with Kenny being an ex pitcher himself figures he can keep his his battery made on the same page get a chance to talk a little bit. Runners go. Borges up with it. 
And Washington State gets out of the inning after Washington put a couple men on base. For Washington in the bottom of the fourth inning, no runs on a hit. There was one Washington State error and two runners left on base. We're through four innings. Washington State and Washington are tied at one. Prime Sports Northwest wants you to get ready for the playoffs. Join host Kevin Calabro and Eddie Johnson for the Sonics Playoff Special. Review the season and preview the playoffs on the Prime Sports Sonics Playoff Special. Kevin Calabro and Eddie Johnson put you into the game plan Wednesday, April 28th at 8 Pacific. examines the sports, the coaches, the student athletes, and the people and programs of the University of Washington that make it one of the premier collegiate athletic forums in the country. Husky Profile, only on Prime Sports Northwest. Don Poyer and Chuck Nelson take you inside Husky Sports, Thursday, April 29th at 9 Pacific. Ready for the top half of the fifth inning, Washington State and Washington tied at one. A reminder, Pac-10 sports action continues here on Prime Sports Northwest with softball as the University of California Golden Bears face the Oregon Ducks. You can watch that Monday night at 10 right here on Prime Sports Northwest. Don Borowski to start things for Washington State in the top half of the fifth. He'll be followed by Josh Hammock and Jeff Borges. Right fielder, Tom Borowski. grounding to short to end inning number two for Washington State. Watched his average drop from 310 to 295 with one ground wow. out. That uh, shows you Don with uh, just 43 at bats so far this year. Jamie Day catches the. Uh, Plate with his first pitch, but the second one evens the count at one and one. Day with a walk and a strikeout so far here through the first four innings. Giving up two hits. That one will catch the corner and again evens the count two and two. Get an opportunity to watch this running fastball. Ah, borderline there. You see the catcher Shuey doing a great job of letting the umpire there <laughs> come the, right back. The, the frame's not one. that no. big, Chris, and we go full <laughs> three and two. Good, good attempt there. And strikeout number two for Day as he got Borowski to go after that one. A little sinking fastball by Day. Uh, dip right there. Great pitch right there. Really has done a good job of throwing to mm -hmm. Shuey's glove as well. How difficult is it for a hitter, Dave, with somebody like Day who brings the ball from different places and has different motion on it? Well, I'm surprised that uh, Day has had the success against the left-hander there that he does because generally when you drop down like Day is doing, that's a real uh, a disadvantage for a right-handed hitter, but it's not a, a disadvantage for a left-handed hitter, but that ball was just perfectly placed on the strikeout to Bar Borowski. Great looking curve there and quickly 0-2 to Hammock. Well, there's a good fastball right there. That that's pretty good velocity on it. We're we'll getting an opportunity to watch Day's motion. Now look right here as he hides the ball. He kind of stopped right there. Great hip turn. There's another strikeout. There you go. Great mechanics right there. During the replay, as Dave mentioned, he fanned hammocks, so back-to-back -back strikeouts, two gone. And we'll watch the strikeout pitch. You're going to have to see it right here. Tough pitch right there. Started that slider right down the center of the plate. By the time it got up there, it was out of the strike zone. 
but Day is doing an excellent job of changing pitches, changing location. Now, there's a fastball that I was talking about earlier about how it runs in on the right hand hitter. Let's get an opportunity. Let's take an eye or a look right here to see if he comes back with the breaking ball on this next pitch. Looks like we're gonna have a little equipment change. Maybe the mask got broke by Shuey or whatever. That's got to give a, a hitter fits though oh. the way Day delivers. Just keep you off yep. balance. Yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna want to get real comfortable in the batter's box against a guy like this, like Day is, especially if you're a right hander here. And let's see if he comes back with the breaking ball here. Catcher gives the outside location. Fastball that he tried to overthrow and tried to do too much with it right there. 2-0 to Borges. Chad Amble waiting on deck. Dave's doing a great job of changing location. <laughs> Shuey leaving that one there, but uh, didn't get a call from Brian Gooch, and it's 3-0. talked about that softball game that will be broadcast. Get a chance to watch Brian Gooch when he threw the home plate umpire when he throws a new ball back to the pitcher. Rutz gives way to Jorgensen. And that'll end the inning for Washington State in the top half of the fifth. Nothing across. We're midway through the third game of this set. Tied at one. Watching Prime Sports Northwest, home of the Washington Huskies. Valley I-5 in Kent sells more motorhomes than anyone else in Washington. Why? Because they're the motorhome pros. They have the best selection, best prices, and they care. When you think of motorhomes and fun times, think Valley I-5. Prime Sports Northwest. From professional championships to hometown meets. From the court to the coaches, from the games to the people who play them, we cover your teams and your sports from every angle. In prime time and all the time, for nearly 2 million households, Prime Sports Northwest is the winner coming home. Well, the guys who did the damage last time up will be at the plate for Washington in the bottom of the fifth, seven, eight, nine to start it. Brandon Newell, Brett Newell, Reed Johnston. Johnston got a single into the hole at short and came around to score on a single by Ryan Rutz, tying the game in the third. Washington State getting on the board in the top half of that inning. Newell with the fly to Williamson in center last time up. Terry, these two pitchers that we're seeing today, Todd, they don't mess around out there. But it's been a very crisply played game so far. Just a little over an hour to reach the midway point in contrast to a three hour plus seven inning game yesterday in the first game of the doubleheader. One and two to Brandon Newell. Brandon, a first team Northern Division pick last year as a reliever. Seeing time pitching in, playing the infield again for the Huskies, and watches that one sail by at two and two. Brandon, he's just one of those kids. He just loves to play the game. Yeah, that was real evident when we were talking to him. You can see that uh, you never like to say baseball is my life, but but it's pretty close to it for yep. this young man. Full count to Brandon. Borowski giving chase will not get to this one. It'll drop at the base of the fence in the gap. Newell digs for second and will stop there. 
And that was a pretty good poke considering the way the wind's blowing. It dude. was a pretty good poke. That ball carried a lot farther into the gap in right center field than I thought. I think I'm not too sure that Borowski didn't lose this ball, though. Or maybe he thought it was going to bounce off the top of the fence there. See, he stopped way short. He didn't really have a good angle on it, but by the time he ran it down, Newell trots into second with a leadoff double. Be interesting to be out there and see how big an effect the wind has mm -hmm. on that on that right field corner, whether it helped knock it down a little bit as well. Brett Newell with the bluff. Hammock's throw is not only behind the runner, it's behind the shortstop, as that throw was very wide a second base, and Brandon Newell rolls into third. <laughs> Brandon trying to figure out why they're picking on him. Got a That's little. A, you gotta go as a throwing error on Hammock on the pickoff attempt. We see Newell going back in the throw way, way over the head of the shortstop cover. Now you see Brandon coming in while well, Pete Rose head first slide. Watch that uniform after today's game. Yeah, he's still trying to shake the dirt out from the yep. inside of the uni, I think. Notice now that the Cougar infield has all pulled in in hopes of getting a ground ball and cutting the run off of the plate. Towards right center, Borowski circling, making that grab on the run. Throw is going to be up the line, and Brunstad will have to cut it off even before it gets to the mound as Brandon Newell comes across to give Washington a 2-1 lead. Deep enough to score him. That's what the Husky fans wanted. Good job of hitting by Brent Newell. He slaps one out in the alley, right center field. You see the center fielder Wimson and Chase, the right fielder Borowski comes up with it. She skates go out from under him, and that's why the throw is way up the line. And you see Newell chugging in from third with a go-ahead run. A real major difference that he had to catch that one circling and going to the side as opposed to being able to line it up. Todd, I think you hit it right on the head when you said, you know, your comment about right field. It's a little treacherous out there today. The wind and the sloppy turf. There you see the Brandon Newell getting a hug. Brandon and Brett. Yep. Teaming up. Not related. 2-0 to Johnston. Now Brandon from Blaine and Brett from El Segundo, California. Somewhat ironic. They both spell their last name the same way. Johnston taking that one deep again. Cameron for the second time back on the track and hauls it down. Hearts in throats that time. And the Husky fans here in front of us were up on their feet with the crack of the bat that time. Ryan Rutz. Getting set to step in. Meanwhile, down the right field bullpen, one of the possible starters for the game, Kyle Kawabata, is warming up. The sophomore from Kailua, Hawaii. Pitched very well in midweek against Gonzaga. And a little bloop to right. Borowski can't get to that one in time. And Rutz drops a base hit in. <laughs> Look at Rutz standing over there. But Jeff. Yeah, he's, he's behind the big guy in the red unit. There you see him over there. Boy, he's a competitor. Rutz, he is. Man, oh, man. Wimmer, 0 for 2. Stepping in. Grounded back to the pitcher in the first. Fly to right in the fourth. Rutz with his second base hit. Was picked off last time as... Uh, he was headed towards second before Rocky Murray had even gotten rid of the ball, and uh, Ryan has learned from that experience. Mm -hmm. I gotta believe, though, that Ryan, if he can get the jump here, he will be off. Hesitated for a moment as Wimmer shows bunt as well and takes it down low. Yeah, Rocky Murray, the pitcher for the Cougar, the Cougars out there, he kind of did a little cheat step. He just kind of slid the. Lead foot forward, didn't get that big hip turn. Watch to see if he's not a little bit quicker trying to get the ball to the dish. Rutz listed at 5 5. 
by the way, and Brunstad over there at 6-4. <laughs> Took one step and came back again. Good look at the sophomore from Kamayakin High School, Ryan Rutz. And he hesitated and almost paid for it that time. If uh, Murray had gone to the three-quarter move instead of the half, he would have had it. I think Ryan, there you see the lead right there, and that's a, that is as close as, whoa. Yeah. I, I'll tell you what, that stride by Rocky Murray, that's as close as you can come without it being called a buck. There's an imaginary 45-degree line out there, supposed to be. Rutz had a brief conference with Kurt right there in between throws by Murray. 1-0 is the count to Wimmer with two gone here. Washington will run across in the bottom of this fifth for a 2-1 lead. Huskies enter the game today two games back of Washington State and Oregon State who share the division lead. Would make that trip back to the Palouse enjoyable if you can get two out of three if you're a Cougar fan. Two and zero now to Wimmer. And a real test here, Dave, for Rocky Murray. He's got to show some concentration and get his uh, stuff across the plate. That's right. You can't, as you're if you're out there pitching, you can't direct all your attention and energy specifically at the hitter here because Ryan Rutsch will take off, and you can't shift all your concentration over to the runner over there at first because then you don't make a good pitch to the plate. Rutz with a good lead again. Block. And the ball called that time. First base umpire Tim Stevens making the call. So Rutz had him rattled just enough yep. and got Murray to pay for it. Well, we're going to get an opportunity to watch it again, and let's see if we can pick up what happened. I think perhaps it was a stutter step is what created the Bach right there. Now you see Murray trying to get an explanation from the umpire. And uh, assistant coach Jack Brossman coming out on the field for Washington State to talk to Tim Stevens about it. There's also hollering coming from uh, the Cougar dugout as well, I believe, by Coach Brayton, as you'll see him debate it. Dave, let's watch it again and see if you can tell us what he the needed only, to do and what he didn't do. Well, let's watch his right foot. He paused. I couldn't see anything there, folks. I'm sorry. Maybe there's a question in the Looked umpire's like a stop mind to me, though. or in the pitching coach, Jack Brosman, whether he came to a complete stop. And I think Jack has probably pushed about as far as he had better push it if he wants to stick around for the entirety, this entire ball game or not. I don't think it's, maybe we're going we're to get an opportunity to watch it again. The only thing I can notice is watch his right foot. Okay, now get okay, there. Maybe he's saying he double clutch. Maybe the umpire felt that perhaps as he was bringing his hands down that he stopped twice. Maybe if we get a chance, we can watch that one one more time in real yeah. speed and see if he did come to a, a complete stop right. too, and or whether he made a clutch. So that's about the only other thing. So Kawabata continues to warm in the bullpen. He appears to be ready if needed. Let's watch it again, Dave. Okay, now see, see I. I, that's the only thing I could think, Todd, is perhaps he said that he, he double clutched with his, his hands. Towards right center, Williamson drifts back, makes the one-hand grab. Washington getting a run in the bottom half of the fifth inning. It came on two hits. There was one Washington State error and one man left on base. We're through five, so we're legal, and at that point, Washington has a 2-1 lead. Husky fans, join head football coach Don James and athletic director Barbara Hedges for a friendly round of golf. Hole in one. Yes, sir. With a twist. The 1993 Coaches Tour will be hitting a course near you soon. The tour tees off April 26th in Wenatchee, April 28th in Everett, and April 30th in Portland. Call 543-0540 or 1-800-AUW-ALUM for information and reservations. Then come on out and hit them with your best shot. Yes!
Prime Sports Northwest. From professional championships to hometown meets. From the court to the coaches. From the games to the people who play them. We cover your teams and your sports from every angle. In prime time and all the time, for nearly 2 million households, Prime Sports Northwest is the winner coming home. Getting ready for the top of the sixth, Washington leads Washington State 2-1. You can watch Husky Profile, Don Poyer and Chuck Nelson will feature spring football and catch up with the women's softball team as they wrap up their inaugural season. It's Thursday, April 29th at 9 right here on Prime Sports Northwest. Chad Amble takes a ball for his first pitch from Day and then rifles a single into left. First hit of the game for Amble and only the third hit of the game for Washington State. Yeah, but if you're a Washington State Cougar fan, and there's plenty of them here at the ballpark today, you got to like that one. Your number nine hitter leads off with a single. Watch his swing right here. Good job of generating some bat speed. Gets ahead of that bat through the zone real quick. That's how you do it. Amble bringing just a 207 average in part time play. That's his seventh hit of the season. Cameron showing bunt. As Amble goes back to first. Ken Cameron doubled his last time up, bringing home Hammock with the Cougars' only run in the top of the third. Newell way in at third base now. Cameron takes. And if Jorgensen had been back scrambling, which is kind of what uh, Shuey is telling him, they might have had a pick off at first. Bobo Brayton going through the signals again. And if we can get a chance to show you Brandon Newell, he is uh, practically in the hitter's box on that last pitch creeping down the third baseline. He's not in quite as tight this time. Well, he could certainly carry on a verbal conversation with the hitter, though, from where he's standing if he wanted to, Todd. He could whisper to him. Yeah. Much less verbal. <laughs> yeah. Cameron bunts that one back to the screen, evens it at one. Let's see now, perhaps, if Bobo Brayton does an electa. Change things up a little bit right here. Just good opportunity as Bobo goes through some signs, maybe somewhere in all of that. There's something going on here, but this is a good opportunity right here for the Cougars if they elect to maybe hit put a hit and run on. One and one. Cameron takes inside. There's the throw to first, and they almost got him. Jorgensen says, I got him. Where what was the problem? But had Chewy's throw been a little bit closer. Jorgensen made a fine backhanded high grab just to save it. He would have had the tag. Well, we're going to get an opportunity to watch it. Through the marvels of electronics and instant replay. Here we go. I think Jorgie, I'm not sure Randy got the tag down there quick enough. Cameron lays that one down this time. Brandon Newell charging but makes a wide throw and still able to keep his wow. feet on the bag is uh, Rutz. That'll bring Buzzy Verdusco out from first base. <laughs> Now the umpire talking to Verdusco. Bobo Brayton will be walking in from the left side of your screen in a moment. You can see him talking to Brian Gooch. Well, the umpires have had a lot of conversations with the coaching staff today. Let me say Brett Newell was covering that time out at uh, the bag with Rutz heading towards second, or rather toward first. Well, let's see, you be the judge at home. Did they get him at second or not? There was no doubt what Brandon was going to do with it. He kind of throws it off a little bit right there. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah, he sound, sounded out from here, didn't he, Todd? Foot looked solid on the first one, but whether he was juggling the ball or not, who knows, again. But it looked like he had the snag when the foot was there. It's the one thing I will say, much as we had with the uh, ball call before, the slow-mo replay, it's uh, we, difficult well, to see. Now remember, the umpires don't have the luxury of watching it like we do here, but right there, I think the foot is on the bag. And it looked like he held onto the ball. It looked like it didn't squirt loose and back up. So it, with this one, it looks like a pretty good call. Well, the throw definitely beat him. And Bobo, again, loses maybe another argument. So it'll go as a 5-6 fielder's choice. Cameron's on it first. Franklin the batter. 
with one down as the wind picks up a little bit, swirling here behind the bag. That was kind of a hectic appearance for Chad Amble out there. He tried to pick him off at first, and then the close play at second. There's a pitch out. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Day, you better get that ball out a little bit farther on a pitch out. It's pretty close to being dangerous. Raindrops starting to uh, appear. Ruts did not make the tag, but makes the throw over to first in time to get Franklin. So two gone as Cameron moves up to second. You get an opportunity to watch the ball. The ball's not hit very well right here. I think the ball kind of squirts to the right here a little bit. You see Ryan coming in. Ryan Rush trying to make the tag. Good call by the umpire. Only choice that Ryan had was to go across the diamond and get the man out at, sec or out at first. But the Cougars keep it alive as the umbrellas come out. Kincaid reaching on Brett Newell's throwing error last time up. Speed breaking ball right there. Jamie Day would like to get out of this right now. I'm sure he didn't want to face Kincaid in this position with the 385 batting average, although it's dropped from 390 at the start of the game. Day's had him in control so far. Todd, look who's uh, up next. This is a pretty good situation for the Cougars right here. Another off speed breaking ball. By Jamie Day. Cameron at second. Robo Brayton continuing to give encouragement to Kincaid. And bluff back. No one coming in to cover the bag, but it's enough to get Cameron back. Underneath that breaking ball, Doty back to the wall, looks and leaps and can't get to it. Wow. And that didn't again, as we saw yesterday, didn't appear as though it were going anywhere. And all of a sudden, it just drifts and drifts and drifts and is gone for the two run home run for Kincaid, his first home run of the year. Well, I'll tell you what, Todd, when he hit that, I thought there's no way that that ball is going to go out of here. But it did. And there you see the happy Cougars. We're going to get an opportunity to watch it again. The ball's going to be up in the strike zone, inside part of the plate. And Cade, there you go. He gets that head out and he lifts it. He's looking at it right here. There you see Doty, the left fielder for the Huskies. I thought he had a pretty good beat on it. And all of a sudden, up in the net. Over the blue monster, like the green monster, like in Fenway. That was up in the net. So sixth home run of the year for Kincaid, and now the pitch to Brunstad is deep and will go to the wall and left. He takes a big turn, and in fact, the outfield's so deep, they're going to hold him to about a 370-foot single, and you can see Brunstad's reaction. Let me make the correction again for Kincaid. It's his sixth home run of the year. Little uh, glitch in the stats that we had here. So a sixth home run for Kincaid, putting Washington State up with a two-run homer. And Brunstad now on at first for Jeff Williamson. Well, the table was pretty well set for the Cougars, especially that part of the lineup that they were bringing up this inning. Williamson to left field. Darren Doty will have the play on this one, and that'll end the inning. But Washington State getting on the board with two runs, coming on three hits. There were no errors for Washington, and one man left on base. We'll go to the bottom half of the sixth inning. Washington State regaining the lead 3-2 over Washington. Hi, I'm Chuck Olson. You know out here at Chuck Olson Chevrolet, we have two brand new vehicles that really compete with used in price. One is this Cavalier, $500 down and less than $200 a month. And the other is a full-size work truck, $500 down and less than $250 a month. So if you're looking for new at the right price, it would really pay you to come on out to Chuck Olson Chevrolet. We've got the right price all the time. Remember, Chuck Olson Chevrolet, 176 in Aurora North. The buy-in's great. 
In Australia, there's wild beaches, the outback, and Aussie rules football. Full out, full blown, full contact football. The hardest hits, the awesome kicks, and the man in white. There's nothing like it. Australian rules football, it's a kick. Mad Max would have a hard time in this league. Tuesday, April 27th at 9.30 Pacific. Bottom of the sixth, Darren Doty's first pitch from Rocky Murray. Misses. Doty, the number three hitter in the lineup, will be followed by first baseman Randy Jorgensen, D.H. Jeff Weibel. As you see the man of the moment, Mike Kincaid with his sixth home run of the year. Ah, 30th RBI. Another day at the office, Todd. Excuse me. Just another day at the office for the D.H. Wind picking up intensity and uh, moving a little bit more towards left center. That one will go back through the middle. Doty aboard with his first hit of the game. I thought Rocky Murray, the pitcher for the Cougars, were going to come up with that one. Jorgensen, his single extended his hitting streak to 18 games, as you see the fans with that necessary item to bring to Pacific Northwest baseball games unless as you were last weekend you're indoors. That's right. That was nice. Isn't that? College classic. And an opportunity to watch that young man for Oregon State Chrisman. Boy is he a good looking prospect. And in the player of the week for two shutouts. Well deserved as you see Doty. Those 14 steals in 20 attempts, by the way, for Doty. And Murray will send him back. Keep an eye on uh, Rocky. We got an interpretation of what the Bach was. Apparently, the umpire felt that he paused twice as he was bringing the hands together down to his chest. It's a straightaway center, and Williamson races back, looks up, and won't wow. get a chance at that one either. Jorgensen's third home run of the series, his sixth of the year. And Washington back on top, 4-3. Well, I'll tell you what, the middle of the lineup for these two teams <laughs> doing some damage to some earned run averages. RBI is number 39 and 40 for Jorgensen. He leads Washington in that category as well. Watch this pitch right here. A breaking ball that Murray came back with. And Jorgensen stays in so well against left-handers. There you see the center fielder giving chase, but finally Jeff Williamson realizes that's way out of Gave here. Gave up on that one in a hurry. And that's going to be it for Rocky Murray. And he will be replaced by Kyle Kawabata. I mentioned Kawabata was being considered as a starter, but he'll come on in relief, and we'll tell you more about him when we return to Seattle with Washington holding a 4-3 lead. fans join head football coach Don James and athletic director Barbara Hedges for a friendly round of golf. Hole in one. Yeah, sure. With a twist. The 1993 coaches tour will be hitting a course near you soon. The tour tees off April 26th in Wenatchee, April 28th in Everett and April 30th in Portland. Call 543-0540 or 1-800-AUW-ALUM for information and reservations. Then come on out and hit them with your best shot. Yes. Emerald Racing at Yakima Meadows through September 20th. 
If you can't make it to the track or Long Acres Park in Seattle, enjoy the races from a satellite site near you. 14 locations around the state, Bellingham, Everett, Port Angeles, Chehalis, Wenatchee, Aberdeen, Moses Lake, Northport, White Salmon, Oak Harbor, Bremerton, Vancouver, and Spokane. Thursday through Sunday, Emerald Racing at Yakima Meadows. couple of changes as we go back to action. Kyle Kawabata on the mound for Washington State. You see 5-0 with a 4-9-4 ERA. And with the change from left to right, Washington makes a change as well. John Vandergreen will step in for Jeff Weibel at the DH position. Vandergreen was the DH yesterday. It was one for five in the double hitter with two RBIs, including a home run. Had a two-run homer in the opening game of the doubleheader yesterday. The loss for Washington. As you take a look at first-year coach Ken mm -hmm. Knudsen, assistant as well, in familiar position uh, along the Husky sides. And Vandergreen, a redshirt freshman, has been real impressive here. Dave has a good stick. He's a big tall kid. He got a big strike zone. What I was wondering here, Todd, what kind of recruiting tool does Bobo use to recruit Kawabata from Hawaii to come and play in the Palouse? He's thinking about the weather. Bounces that one in the dirt. Of course, uh, Kawabata not the only Hawaii player mm. uh, on either side in this contest. Mentioned earlier, Kyle had a uh, fairly good outing in midweek going against Gonzaga as he gives up the walk to Vandergreen. Kawabata went seven and a third against the Bulldogs, picking up the victory. He gave up five runs, all of them earned on six hits, walked out one and struck out nine in that seven and a third. So we mentioned he's five and a overall, 47 and a third innings pitch, but he gives up the walk. And still nobody gone for the Huskies here in the bottom of the sixth. Christian Shuey, 0 for two, will step up. Shows bunt, the infield racing in, but he takes it outside. Brandon Newell waiting on deck. Washington opened the inning with a single from Doty, and he came around on Jorgensen's 400-foot-plus shot to straightaway center field. Vandergreen drawing the walk from Kawabata. The swing just wide, as Joe Ross pointing in the third base <laughs> coaching by saying, it was fair, it was fair. It bounced foul, and Brian Gooch making the call. Uh, Kenny Knutson, the head coach of the Huskies, he's elected now with the lead, a slim lead of four to three as the rain continues to intensify. He decided he's going to try something a little bit differently instead of letting the man bunt, go ahead and try to slap one by those charging infielders. Uh-oh. Thrown away by Kawabata as the first baseman Brunstad was coming in. Vandergreen will turn at second and stay there. Go as a throwing error on the pitcher, and so Kawabata not off to a great start here. Walks Vandergreen and then sends him over to second with the throwing error. Well, I don't know what Kyle Kawabata was thinking about, but the first baseman is charging. There you see it. You have to throw the ball once you step that way, and of course it gets by the first baseman for Washington State, Kevin Brunstead, as you see the man going into second base. There. Obviously, there was a miscommunication because I think Brunstead was as confused as perhaps Vandergreen was. Shuey again showing Bunt a good stop by Hammock. Give you the numbers for Rocky Murray. He goes five innings, give up four runs. All four of them were earned on seven hits. No walks, two strikeouts, and he hit one batter. So two and one now to Shuey. As you can see, Vandergreen in scoring position out there waiting at second, and the count will go even with that foul roller. Now, Todd, as you mentioned, they, only one player was hit. That was Randy Jorgensen. He's had a marvelous day for the Huskies. Two for two, home run, two RBIs, been on base all three times. Did get picked off at first. That's his only. It proves that he's human. He had a big game in game two, as we said, two homers in that contest. 
Hammock asking for the appeal, and Tim Stevens out in the middle of the diamond says no, no swing. We'll go to a full count. Again, the Huskies with nobody out. You see Vandergreen waiting at second. Washington looking for a chance to break this game open and try to get a little bit of breathing room. Yep. Backdoor breaking ball. And you can see what the wind was doing. That's our center field camera out there on that shot. You can see how difficult it is even to hold that shot, how windy it is as we see the called strike. Kawabata with a good pitch and got Shuey leaning. He, he just completely freezes Shuey. Brandon Newell doubled and scored the first run for Washington. And he'll take a called strike. Wind now uh, kind of wrapping the flags around a different direction as they're blowing more towards straightaway center field. But there are swirling gusts everywhere. You can see them again. Trouble. Newell sending that one down the right field line. And a diving grab by Borowski, again having problems with the breeze, gets the ball quickly back into the infield with a pretty good toss. I'll tell you what, that was as fine a play as you'll see from a right fielder at any level. Right-handed hitter Newell, when he hits this ball, now this will tail away from the right fielder. Watch this right here. Borowski got a great jump. That's a terrific play. Looked like right a there. wide receiver running it down and out here. Yeah. He all of a sudden had to make a big cut right there to the outside. Well, that's because the wind, I'm sure, knocked it down. Not Kawabata. He get back in strike zone here a little bit. That was a great play by Borowski. Brett Newell, 0 for 1. Sack fly and an RBI. Brought Brandon in. Tried to hold but couldn't. And again, Kawabata, since that first walk to Vandergreen, has looked pretty good here. And he's ahead of Brett Newell, 0 and 2. Bunch of sharp breaking ball. Missing in a good location. Heading the count. You can waste that pitch. Reed Johnston scheduled to be up next for Washington. Vandergreen waiting. Amble with a nice hop. Brunstad a good scoop, and that'll end the inning, but not before Washington goes back in front again. The long shot by Jorgensen, two runs on two hits. There was one error, and a man left on base. We're through six, and with Jorgensen's home run, Washington regains the lead. From the achy breaky to the tush push, country line dancing is sweeping across America like an Oklahoma dust storm. And now you can learn America's most popular new dances right in your own home with this great new video from Quality. Meet Diane Horner. Diane's unique teaching method will have you country line dancing in minutes. It's easy and fast. In no time at all, you'll be doing the electric slide, slap leather, honky tonk stomp, tush push, and of course, the achy breaky. We start with simple individual dance steps and patterns at a slow beginner's beat. Then put them all together into the full dance. Finally, we show you the complete line dance, repeating the patterns over and over so you can practice right along with us. Order now and we'll send you a second hot country video, country partner dancing, absolutely free. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-641-4499. Order today and receive Country Line Dancing and Country Partner Dancing. Two videos for $19.95 plus $4 shipping and handling. Call now or send check or money order to the address on your screen. Welcome back to Seattle. Todd Pickett along with Dave Haverlo as we move to the top of the seventh inning. Six, seven, eight hitters for Washington State. Right fielder Don Borowski will be followed by catcher Josh Hammock and second baseman Jeff Borges. Going against Jamie Day, who... Regains the lead once again. Day three strikeouts and a walk through six innings. And 2-0 and oh to Borowski. Borowski looking for his first base hit of the contest. Struck out last time.
now a change, and they are calling it one and one, saying that uh, Borowski will have that count rather than 2-0. There's that uh, modified huh. fast pitch delivery for Brian Gooch. What'd you say, is a rotator cuff or yeah, maybe tendonitis? <laughs> oh, great pitch. Boy, boy, we're gonna get a chance to look at this one again. Where in the world? Remember, it's not where they catch it, but it's where they cross the plate. Don't say only if it dropped down low would be about the only thing. The auxiliary <laughs> umpires liked it. The Cougar fans are going to like this. Borowski inside the pole and takes it out. Second home run of the season for Borowski, and he ties the game at four. Number 24 coming in, getting some high fives from his teammates. Second home run of the year, just barely inside the, the pole, but doesn't make any difference. Get a chance to watch the big. Oh, well, that ball looked like it was in on his hands a little bit. There is T. Borowski. He's not sure that's going to be fair or not. Stood there and watched it. There you see the teammates come over and slapping him. Good pitch. Called strike to Hammock. Hammock walked and scored. The third struck out in the fifth. Brett Newell will take the pop behind second base for the first out of the inning. That'll bring up Jeff Borges. One of the bat boys in attendance. In fact, I think that might be uh, Bobo's grandson, his uh, oh, really? son Fritz's little boy. Fritz said, yeah, I have to kind of work in the dugout as a uh, bat boy advisor to him, but uh, Fritz making the drive up from Beaverton for the series. Jeff Borges watching that one. Downstairs again, one and one. Borges a sack that almost turned into a bunt single in the third and a pop to the first baseman in the fifth. Good breaking ball there by Day. And again, you can see how tough he makes it on the right-hand hitter. That yeah, breaking ball, when like thrown like that, it'll freeze that hitter. It's tough for those hitters to react by the time they can make a decision. It's across the plate. There's a great breaking ball right different, there. Different motion, different release point. Very positive results. Give you a chance to watch a sweeping breaking ball. Look at how he hides down there. It kind of comes Laredo. Look at the... Wow, did that curveball cover a lot of area. Holy smokes. Yeah, I don't know if that one dropped off the table, but it sure rolled the length of it. Yeah. <laughs> and he starts Chad Amble off with a called strike. Amble with a single and two trips, as you see. That time the breaking ball misses. That's the nice thing with Jamie Day. A lot of the time he makes you go after a pitch that's not in the zone. And as a coach, you have to yep. love that. Amble we'll trying to take that one to right. Puts it into foul territory near the bullpen, and it'll drop into the Washington State bullpen. I'm just very impressed with how Jamie Day is able to spot his pitches. Very seldom does he come back with the same pitch in the same area. In fact, I can't remember a situation where he's throwing two pitches back to back, same velocity and same location. Fouls that one off, and it'll stay at one and two. Clint Brown and Brett Merrick are warming up in the Washington bullpen. For Washington State, Brian Parks is throwing, and also Ron Naumu, the third baseman, is warming up down in the Washington State bullpen. Amble getting a piece of that to stay alive at two and two. The University of Oregon hosts the Pepsi Invitational. Washington State, Arizona State, and Kansas State will be there Sunday, May 2nd at 8.30 here on Prime Sports Northwest.
versus really the future of track and field at the collegiate level. It's, can't have dual meets and uh, have that expense. They'll go to the Invitationals and continue to keep those programs alive. That'll be a great meet. Brandon Newell grovels up Amble's grounder, and that'll end the inning for Washington State as the Cougars get one run on the home run by Borowski. There were no errors and no runners left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the seventh, tied at four. NBA Inside Stuff is definitely not your normal TV show. It has unbelievable features, incredible highlights, and very interesting hosts. Now, get ready for the new Not Your Normal magazine. NBA Inside Stuff magazine puts the NBA on the printed page and in your face. Jam-packed with unbelievable features, human highlights, and very interesting color action photography. And many of the stories are written by the players themselves. You can't get any more inside than that. Act now and receive the NBA Inside Stuff cap brought to you exclusively by AJD. So read NBA Inside Stuff magazine. It's fun, it's exciting, and it's definitely not your normal magazine. Order all four issues of NBA Inside Stuff magazine and the NBA Inside Stuff cap by AJD for only $13.99. This cap is available only through this offer. Plus, you'll also get official NBA basketball cards free in every issue. Call 1-800-NBA-DUNK. Prime Sports Northwest separates Oregon sports from the pack with Duck Sports Journal. Duck Sports Journal is your monthly magazine show devoted entirely to University of Oregon athletics. Join hosts Jerry Allen and Peg Reese as they introduce you to the athletes, coaches, and programs that make the stories behind the scores. Duck Sports Journal, only on Prime Sports Northwest. Jerry Allen and Peg Reese deliver your Duck Sports Journal Thursday, April 29th at 10 Pacific. You're watching Northwest College Baseball on Prime Sports Northwest, home of the Pac-10. Welcome back to Graves Field. As we go to the bottom of the seventh, Reed Johnston, who scored the initial run of the game for Washington, will get things started. Facing Kyle Kawabata in his second inning of work. Johnston singled, stole the base, scored in the third, flied to left in the fifth. He'll be followed by Ryan Rutz and Matt Wimmer. What a good movement on that pitch right there, Todd. That was a good sinking fastball. Uh, the young man from Hawaii. Saw Kyle Kawabata. He's listed at 5'11", 185. Sophomore from Kailua. 32-2 and two pitching record in yeah. high school. And we gave you his numbers earlier for the victory against Gonzaga at midweek. Bulldogs are in Portland for the weekend. Oregon State at Portland State. That's the Northern Division schedule. And that one sports off the glove of Corky Franklin. Not having a great day at third base. His second error of the game. This really isn't a very difficult play. I'm surprised Franklin wasn't able to make it. Although he had a little distance go. Hit right in the center of his glove and popped out. Johnston aboard. We'll keep an eye on him. Mr. Perfect in the stolen base department. Uh, had one earlier in the game to set up the first run. Ryan Rutz flied right in the first, singled in the third, singled in the fifth. This could be rather exciting again with Kawabata and Brunstad out there. Bunt situation. The last time this happened, Kyle threw it down in the bullpen area. Brunstad charging, and the second baseman, Borges, was coming in behind the runner. Design play. If it had gone on much longer, Brunstad would have had to trade places with Hammock. <laughs> Brunstad charges again. It's fouled at the plate. Yeah. 
you see the numbers again for Johnston, as we mentioned, perfect for the career as well. Rutz coming back over after a conference. You can see him still looking back at Ken Knutson for signs once again. One and one the count after that pitch out. So a lot of strategizing, Dave, going yeah. on for both these sides right now. Both coaches trying to figure out what the other one's going to do. I've got to believe, though, Kenny Knutson's going to try to uh, bunt the man over, especially at this stage of the ball game as we're in the bottom of the seventh inning tie ball game. How about it? Pretty good move there for the right-hander. I'm a little surprised looking down here. Ryan Rutz has not been called upon or has not sacrificed all year. This will be his first. And he puts it in a good place. Kawabata, much as Day did earlier in the game, scrambling and recovering to come up with the play. But on the sacrifice, Rutz will move Johnston up to second base. I'll tell you what, in the hustling, Ryan Rutz made this play a lot closer at first. And I think Cougar fans want it. Great bunt by Ryan. You see Kawabata giving chase. And Ryan Rutz was just about a half a step too short. You see Kawabata giving chase Kyle and he flips it to the first baseman. That's a good execution and great hustle by Ryan Rutz, the leadoff hitter for the dogs. Matt Wimmer with a man in scoring position. I guess in this weather you can say it's a dog on the pond instead of a <laughs> duck on yeah, the I pond guess. since the ducks don't have a program anymore anyway. <laughs> Got a chance to see all the mud marks on the back of outfielder the uniform of Matt Wimmer. Darren Doty waiting on deck. One gone. Kawabata bluffs Johnston back to second. Reed looking like the before in the detergent commercial. <laughs> Breaking ball's been perhaps the most effective pitch Kawabata's had today. Right. It was in a good location. Wimmer grounded back to the pitcher in the first, is flied out twice, trying to extend an eight game hitting streak. Fouled out of play. Tree. Stops the ball before it gets into the bleachers. So fans grateful for that. And definite favoritism shown there, but uh, the young man's kind enough to give it to one of the bad boys. Hope we go to one and two. Look at that on percentage 419 with the runners in scoring position. Pretty good for a number two hitter. And of course, you got Doty and Jorgensen. The big hitters, of course, uh, waiting their turn. I'm sure what Wimmer's really regretting is that there aren't two out here because with runners in scoring position and two out, he's at 583. Mm. Went around on that one, however. And Kawabata gets the strikeout. His second since coming on in relief of Murray. Here's a chance to watch the breaking ball again. Great location, yeah. Matt, I think you did. We're gonna, there's a great angle there. You can see that that plate or the bat crossed the plate. Matt a little unhappy with himself. A big strikeout for Kyle. But a big challenge again for Kawabata here and Darren Doty, who is hitting 412 with runners in scoring position and 560 with runners in scoring position and two out. He's been up 25 times in that situation and has come up with 14 hits. Hmm. Not bad. No, sir. Johnston waits. For Doty to bring him home. Well, not with that pitch, and we're even at one and one. Cougar fans wanted a strike call on that one. And there are a number of Crimson and Gray fans down the first baseline. Certainly is. Had over 1,500 in attendance for the doubleheader yesterday. There's a look at the Cougar group. 1 1. 
will not be knocked down by Franklin. Cameron up with it. Johnston headed for home. The throw up the line again, and the runner will move to second on the throw. Doty delivers again in the clutch, and Washington's on top, 5-4. Well, that's a situation, Todd, where Kawabata just leaves the breaking ball in on the inside part of the plate here. Right there, you see it. Good job of hitting by Doty. He slaps it past the third baseman for the Cougars. See Franklin diving for it. Here comes the left fielder, Cameron, but not in time as see Johnston coming across the plate with the go ahead run right there. And also, a good job of running by Doty as the throw came to the plate. Doty just rounded first and kept going, and this is pretty, I'd say this is a real smart move right here. Jorgensen, who hit one over the center field fence the last time, is third of the series. He's two for two this afternoon and has been on base all three times. This will be his fourth with the intentional walk. And that'll bring up the redshirt freshman Vandergreen with two on and two out. Vandergreen hitting 400 with runners in scoring position and hitting 375 with them in position and two out. Which is what we have here. Takes a strike. Gives, gives a, a little look back to Brian Gucci after that one. Looking pitch again from Kawabata and quickly in front, 0-2. Yeah, I don't think there's much doubt what Kyle feels most comfortable throwing. Two breaking balls back to back. And that right there is a ball I think that John should have jumped on. See if he wastes a fastball outside. Well, considering Hammock jumped out three feet, I would yeah. say it was a pretty good call, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Sitting at home probably wondering, why are they doing a pitch out situation here? I've got to believe, though, Kawabata is going to try to get him out with his breaking ball. That's what he feels comfortable with. Doty and Jorgensen go, and it's fouled off at the plate. Good job by Knudsen. Keeps the pitcher guessing. And meanwhile, the race of the Bat Boys goes uh -oh. to the Washington State Bat Boy, and the Washington Bat Boy slipped in the water and is uh, shaken up a little bit. The crowd kind of chuckled at first as that young man's feet went out from underneath him. And uh, they're going to take a quick look at him. Might be a little bit of embarrassment in there as well. Hope the young man's not hurt. A little break here momentarily as uh, they'll take a look at the youngster. Probably suffered more of an injury to his pride than anything else. <laughs> And thinking about how mom's going to react when he gets home with the <laughs> dirty trousers. We'll see we here. Go. Watch the left side. <laughs> Tried to jam on the brakes yeah. there, but uh, couldn't quite. So <laughs> Vandergreen will step back in now after that one. Has Doty at second and Jorgensen at first, and we're ready for the one two pitch. Attempt there with Amble trying to sneak in behind Doty. Now the Bat Boys have been challenging one another all weekend, uh -huh. I think, here. Again, Doty out at second base, Jorgensen at first. And the one two. Well, Mr. Haverlow called that one on the button. But Washington is back on top. The Huskies scoring with one run. Coming on one hit, there was one Washington State error and two runners left on base. We'll go to the top of the eighth. The Huskies lead it 
for Walla Walla and Seattle, Auburn and Yakima, TCI Cablevision of Washington puts Prime Sports Northwest in a league by itself. When you think motorhomes, think Valley I-5 in Kent. The prices are right and the selection's never been better. Open every day. Trade-ins welcome. Serving you since 1961. Valley I-5. Think Valley I-5. Top half of the eighth inning, left fielder Ken Cameron, the leadoff man to start it for Washington State. Scheduled to be followed by Corky Franklin and Mike Kincaid. Jamie Day going the distance. Scattered six hits so far and gotten some support from his offense. But he's behind Cameron here, 2-0. Oh. Cameron struck out in the first, doubled in the third, reached base on a fielder's choice, and scored in the sixth. Good-looking pitch there from Day. Type of pitcher, Dave, that you're not going to have to worry so much about whether he's going to tire or wear out. He just keeps the motions, right. keeps the players off balance, and can go the distance. Cameron hoists that one into left. Doty drifts back and makes a stumbling grab there, but uh, hangs on to it. And you can see Darren's reaction. So I'm not too sure where I was on that one, and the wind didn't help any either. No, I think the uh, wind perhaps fooled Doty. Your chance to see it again as Cameron lifts one out in left field. Now watch Doty here. It's a good jump on it. Now the wind kind of knocks it down a little bit, and then Doty reaches up and. It's coming in. It's going out. Yeah. Franklin singled in the first, lined to short in the third, grounded to second in the sixth. <laughs> Appeared to be taking all the way on the pitch from Day. Huskies appear to have uh, Brett Merrick up again in the bullpen down the left field line. And the 2 1 for Franklin. Wow. I think if you're a hitter, you've got to wonder where the ball's coming yeah. from next time. Well, we've got two throwers actually now as we get a better look, thanks to our camera crew, Clint Brown on the left of your screen, the right handed pitcher. Meanwhile, Franklin strikes out. Fifth strikeout of the game for Day. And two gone, Kincaid will be the batter. Well, they get a chance to see how he hides the ball. Day does, and he comes Laredo again in a sweeping, breaking ball right there. And Franklin just not able to catch up with it. Kincaid put one underneath the scoreboard last time up for his sixth homer of the year. Other than that, he's grounded to third and reached base on an error. See, it looks like it's going to be a something on the outside part of the plate. Fastball, it looks like, right there. Consistent. Well, remember the last two, last time these two, there's Bobo Brayton down there in the third base coaching box. The last time these two uh, faced each other, Kincaid got a breaking ball on the inside part of the plate for a home run. And a nice piece of hitting by Kincaid that time as he takes it up the middle for his second hit of the day. Didn't try to turn around on it or do anything fancy went with the pitch. I think that's something that you like to see in a hitter is that they're not trying to go for the downs every time. A nice swing right there. Well, a little bit out front there, but just enough past a diving Brent Newell at shortstop. So Kincaid's had himself a darn good afternoon so far. Little maintenance work once again for Christian Shuey. Mask one time, now the guards. and Kevin Brunstad will be the batter. And a reminder, you can watch Emerald Racing today from Yakima Meadows. Next action from Central Washington's race track will be Thursday at 11.30. Right here on Prime Sports Northwest. Good friend Joe Withy there to call the action for you, along with the rest of the Emerald crew. Brunstad watches that one. Almost looked like it was mm -hmm. going to break back into the zone at the yep. last minute. And if he gets it up in this guy's wheelhouse, 
Cougars could take a lead in a hurry. This young man, he can drive it out of this park. That one Ooh. up high. It's a 2 and 0. Oh, pretty good looking pitch there. Dave, what do you do as a hitter, though, with somebody like Jamie Day who shows you the ball from so many different places and speeds? You well, can't you dig in. Todd, the only thing you can do is hope he makes a mistake because he's got so many different areas where you release the ball from. What your good hitters do is once they can detect that release zone, that zone where that pitcher releases that ball, then they focus in on that area. But with Jimmy or Jamie Day, it'd be very difficult to do because sometimes or just about every other pitch, he, he's releasing the ball from a different location. Green light on 3-0, and but he fouls it off. Another thing that's made it probably uh, tough on some of these hitters, too, is the fact that Jamie Day has been able to throw his breaking ball for strikes when he's behind or ahead in the count. That makes it even tougher on those hitters. Certain pitchers will only have the ability maybe to throw the fastball for a strike when he's behind the counter, vice versa, maybe a breaking ball, whatever the case might be, as a snap throw by Shuey. Called strike on that breaking ball, so we'll go to a full count now for Brunstad. Entered the game with a 389 average, and he has Kincaid on it first with two gone. Seems to kind of be shaking his head a little bit, so <laughs> trying to figure out this guy. Top of the eighth, Washington hanging on to a one-run lead. Time called before the payoff pitch. Home plate umpire Brian Gooch stepping out. Cougars with a pinch hitter waiting on deck. Rob Nicholson coming out. If he gets a chance, runner goes, and it's outside. Brunstad draws the walk. And the second walk of the game for Jamie Day, so after having two in... As we said, 45 and two thirds, he comes up with two so far here in the ball game. And a conference now, not only for the Huskies on the mound, but for the Cougar coaching staff along the first baseline. Ken Knutson and his crew, they go, hey, wait, wait a minute, what are those guys doing over there? They're, they're busy uh, <laughs> pointing over now. The infield conference by the Huskies, and you see Bobo Brayton breaking things up with his assistants. Jack Brosman and Buzzy Verdusco, a couple of former players for him. And for Washington State, it will be Rob Nicholson, 6'2", 189-pound sophomore from Calgary. That'll bring Ken Knudsen out as he is now officially announced. Nicholson brings a 263 batting average, no homers, seven RBIs. And that'll be it for Jamie Day. Good pitching performance for Day as he goes seven and two-thirds. And he so far takes a one run lead to the dugout. We'll tell you about his replacement when we return on Prime Sports Northwest. Husky fans, join head football coach Don James and athletic director Barbara Hedges for a friendly round of golf. All in one. Yes, sir. With a twist. The 1993 Coaches Tour will be heading a course near you soon. The tour tees off April 26th in Wenatchee, April 28th in Everett, and April 30th in Portland. Call 543-0540 or 1-800-AUW-ALUM for information and reservations. Then come on out and hit them with your best shot. Yes! Prime Sports Northwest wants you to get ready for the playoffs. Review the season and preview the playoffs. Join host Kevin Calabro and Eddie Johnson for the Sonics playoff special. Kevin Calabro and Eddie Johnson put you into the game plan Wednesday, April 28th at 8 Pacific. Brought to you by Dairy Queen, Les Schwab Tires, and Rainier Beer. Ice Lager Draft and Draft Light, found in all the cool places. Jamie Day waiting in the dugout now, hoping that he can pick up the victory. 
And he'll be looking for relief help from Brett Merrick, who will come on now. Six foot, 170 pound freshman from Meadowdale and Linwood. Randy Jorgensen's old high school. You see some of Merrick's numbers, one and one, 4.10. Meanwhile, with Merrick coming in, Washington State will pinch hit for the pinch hitter, and Roy Miller will come in to hit for Nicholson. Miller, who was shaken off on a pickoff attempt throw from the catcher to second base. The runner was getting back. Miller was trying to take the throw and got uh, run over literally by the base runner, was shaken up, and he'll now officially step in to hit. Miller at 312, one homer, 27 RBIs. Brett Merrick, 26 and a third innings pitched, given up 20 runs, tw just 12 of those earned. 21 hits, 18 walks, 14 strikeouts. And you need to throw strikes right here. Merrick's a hard thrower, the left-hander is, for a freshman. Kincaid on at second, Brunstad on at first, with two gone here in the top of the eighth. There's a look at Kincaid. He singled after two were out. Brunstad then drew a walk. And that was it for Day. He's responsible, of course, for both men. Two and zero to Miller. Borowski waiting on deck. He's digging himself a hole right here, Todd. Miller fouls that one off. Left fielder Doty uh, very deep as you can watch our camera continue to pan around. Center fielder Wimmer shading to the off field just a bit. And of course there's Brandon Newell hugging the line at third here in the late innings. Miller fouls another one back. Well you see right there Miller a little unhappy with himself. He knew that on that situation right there he got a pitch that he wanted to drive somewhere. He wanted to hit that ball hard. Going into the game today, Miller sharing uh, with Mike Kincaid the most played appearances for the season for the Cougars, official at bats. So experienced hitter here, trying to get Washington State even or on top, or at least keep the inning alive at two and two count. Merrick taking a look back. At Kincaid, and now he'll step off. Neither of the middle infielders had headed toward the bag. And got him on a pitch that appeared to be out of the zone. Miller went chasing, and Merritt comes up with a big, big strikeout to close out the threat for Washington State in the top of the eighth inning. No runs, and we'll go to the bottom of the eighth with Washington State leading 5-4. sense a difference. This is Innisbrook, one of America's most remarkable golf resorts. 63 holes on three championship courses, including the famed Copperhead. After the round, return to your luxurious suite, dine in exceptional restaurants, or relax by one of six pools. But right now, it's time to focus. It's time to play. Innisbrook, Tarpon Springs, Florida, near Tampa. The one, the only. Introducing the new Q. Introducing the new Q. The new Q. 45. Huh? Let me know when you're ready. We're rolling. Yo, what?
Bottom of the eighth, Christian Shuey fouls off the first pitch from Kyle Kawabata. Rob Ryan takes over center field duties now for Washington State. 5'11", 166-pound freshman from Shadle Park High School in Spokane. Bobo Brayton in the Washington State dugout mulling over that last inning for the Cougars. And they squandered an opportunity. Well, I think you're exactly right. The pinch hitter. Miller swung in a bad pitch. Shuey gets a good piece of this one, and it'll go over the head of Cameron. He'll chase it around as Shuey makes a big turn and steams into second easily with a leadoff double. And that is a big hit for the Huskies and their fans that are in attendance today because with a slim one-run lead, you get an opportunity to watch it again. Hanging breaking ball right there. Got belt high. Shuey does a good job of keeping the head down and driving it to the warning track to see the left fielder Cameron giving chase but Shuey the catcher rumbles into second with a leadoff double that's a big big run out there at Shuey's fifth extra base hit of the season and Brandon Newell will step in that'll bring action into the Washington State bullpen once again Brandon's got to hit the ball to the right side right here that's Coward so Abata hangs a breaking ball in there. That's not a good location, son, for that breaking ball. That's Brian Parks warming up in the right field bullpen for Washington State. That breaking ball misses to Newell, and it's 2-0. and Kawabata getting that call, and it's 2-1. and one. chance to pick up on his grip here what he might throw while sitting up there on his back like that there you go Newell poking it fair into the corner Shuey will round third and has the green light the throw is going to come into second so Newell about halfway down the line will scamper back safely he has an RBI Shuey comes across with an insurance run although with these two teams I don't know if there's enough insurance you can buy but it's 6-4 Washington well I'll tell you what not only was it a good job of hitting by Brandon Newell but he makes a big turn at first you get a chance as he goes down slaps it to right but if we get an opportunity maybe we'll see Brandon Newell. he makes a big aggressive turn at first and so the right fielder Borowski has to come up and throw the ball to second base and then with that you see how Brandon Newell Brandon's scampers out. back you see the big turn there by Newell but with that throw going into second base it makes it Brandon on first and that'll be it for Kyle Kawabata as they'll bring Parks out of the bullpen now and Kawabata perhaps is on the line to lose his first game as a Cougar pitcher. We'll tell you more about that and about Parks when we return. Not everyone knows how to reach this place or what to do when they get there. This is the rugged world of the great outdoors. If you enjoy meeting the wilderness on its own terms, here's something you'll want to take aim at. The challenge of outdoor adventures, the lure of outdoor action, the excitement of outdoor life. Now with the special television offer, you can get outdoor life at this great low price. Call now and you'll also receive this extra tough camouflage backpack free with your paid subscription. Every month, Outdoor Life brings you the in-depth coverage that sportsmen have trusted for generations. Expert advice that puts you eye to eye with big game hunting and sport fishing. Stories written by hands that know the feel of a bow and have set their share of hooks. And regional editions that track what's hot in your area. It's a sportsman's celebration of the wilderness every month. Call now for special savings and the free sportsman's backpack. Call for outdoor adventure, for outdoor excitement, for outdoor life. The adventure begins with the last of a kind. He is guilty of sedition. He saved us. Are those the actions of a criminal? Do something. Take him. Why didn't you think when you had the chance? Because what I'm interested in is right here. Daniel Day-Lewis, Madeline Stowe, the last of the Mohicans, rated R. Now that you've seen what's coming up on pay-per-view, here's how easy it is to order. Choose your movie or event and desired showtime from the pay-per-view listings or by watching the previews on this channel. 
order from your home phone by dialing the number for the channel you want to view. Then enjoy. Just tune into the channel you've ordered at the scheduled start time. Order pay per view. It's that simple. Brian Parks coming on for Washington State. Parks brings a 4 and 1 record, a 4.42 ERA. Parks had a brief appearance in the uh, midweek game against Gonzaga as he went one and two thirds innings, giving up two runs, both of them earned, walking one, and an ERA for that game of 10.8. Uh, really kind of hiked his average a little bit. He will start things off against Brett Newell. Brett flied to right in the third, had a sacrifice flying an RBI in the fifth, and grounded to short in the sixth inning. Brian Parks coming out of Bellingham, played up there for John Craig, was his high school coach, and so a lot of these kids on the Husky program certainly are familiar with Brian Parks and what he's going to be able to do, because we've got a lot of kids from the Nooksack Valley, which is up in the northern part of the state here. Parks, a 6'3", 224-pound senior. Big kid. Big kid, strong throwing kid. I'll look through here and see if he played any football, maybe up in Bellingham or. Brett Newell will move Brandon Newell up with that bunt. And the first out of the inning. Sacrifice for Brett and Reed Johnston, who's scored twice today, will be the batter. Singleton scored in the third, fly to left in the fifth, reached base on an error to start the seventh inning and came around to score on Doty's single. So one gone, Brandon Newell out at second, and Johnston goes fishing. Well, I think the intention there by Reed is to try to slap the ball to the right side. A little tardy on that swing. Wind again picking up toward the left field corner. That one down low from Parks. Towards short, it kind of died a little bit. Amble up with it and makes the play for Johnston. It's two gone, and we'll go back to the top of the order now, and Ryan Rutz will be the batter. That one looked as though it would head through the middle of the infield for a minute. Amble then able to make the play. Ryan Rutz flied to right in the first, singled in the third, singled in the fifth, had a sacrifice in the seventh. Well, we mentioned Kyle Kawabata right now, the pitcher of record for Washington State. Not only undefeated this season for the Cougars, undefeated in his career at 8-0. So he is uh, hmm. right now perhaps uh, looking at his first loss, going two-plus innings and giving up two runs, and, of course, still responsible for Brandon Newell out at second base. And, of course, you mentioned uh, the rivalry between these two great universities. Cougars are going to come after you. Kyle's not out of the woods yet, I guess. Amble kicks that one. Tried to throw behind Brandon Newell, but was unsuccessful. That is the fifth Washington State error today. Yeah, well, I don't know what exactly what happened here. We're going to get a chance to look at Ryan as he gets jammed. I don't think the runner perhaps it looked like it just bounced up and off the wrist of Chad Amble, and he's going to try to flip it over and maybe get Newell around in third over there, but very uncharacteristic of a Washington State Cougar team making five errors in the game. Matt Wimmers taking the first pitch for a strike. Wimmer grounded back to the pitcher in the first, fly to right in the fourth, fly to center in the fifth, and was a strikeout victim in the seventh. Brandon Newell on at third as everyone in purple and gold and white is looking into the Husky dugout right now for Ken Knudsen's signals. 
Ryan Rutz on it first. We'll see if uh, they might be sending Rutz to getting in scoring position with two gone here. That's uh, what Parks is thinking, mm -hmm. too. Well, I think especially when Wimmer stepped out of the batter's box there and took a good hard look over into his dugout, maybe that tipped everybody off that perhaps something was on. Let's see if they fake the third and back to first. Nope. Wimmer sends that one towards center. Rob Ryan on there now. We'll make the catch to end the inning. But Washington picks up another run. It came on two hits. There was one Washington State error, and two runners were left on base. Last chance coming for Washington State. The Huskies lead the Cougars 6-4. Inside Stuff is definitely not your normal TV show. It has unbelievable features, incredible highlights, and very interesting hosts. Now, get ready for the new Not Your Normal magazine. NBA Inside Stuff magazine puts the NBA on the printed page and in your face. Jam-packed with unbelievable features, human highlights, and very interesting color action photography. And many of the stories are written by the players themselves. You can't get any more inside than that. Act now and receive the NBA Inside Stuff cap brought to you exclusively by AJD. So read NBA Inside Stuff magazine. It's fun, it's exciting, and it's definitely not your normal magazine. Order all four issues of NBA Inside Stuff magazine and the NBA Inside Stuff cap by AJD for only $13.99. This cap is available only through this offer. Plus, you'll also get official NBA basketball cards free in every issue. Call 1-800-NBA-DUNK. The BBC, Turner Broadcasting and Timeline Video dare you to take a walk on the wild side with Trials of Life. The gripping, award-winning nature video series that exposes the struggle to survive through uncensored, shocking photography. Join acclaimed naturalist David Attenborough for a close encounter with raw nature. See the thrill of the hunt and the strategy of the kill, the relentless drive to continue the bloodline and the miracle of birth. Call now and receive hunting and escaping for $9.99 and see why the law of the jungle is kill or be killed. If it captures your interest, you can get other videos about every other month. Each tape explores the harsh realities of survival in the animal world. Take a walk on the wild side with Trials of Life. Call now to order hunting and escaping and find out why we call them animals. To order your Trials of Life video, call 1-800-688-5100 or send $9.99 plus $3.23 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. Bobo Brayton heading out to the third base coaching box for perhaps the final time this weekend as his team trails by two. He'll send another pinch hitter up to start the ninth inning. Justin Marquardt, 6'4", 200-pound junior from Toilette, Oregon, a transfer from Santa Clara. Marquardt uh, also had a pinch hitting role yesterday. Defensively for Washington, Matt Wimmer moves from center to right, and Joe Trippi will come in to play center field here in the top of the ninth. Marquardt scored a run for Washington State in the first game of the doubleheader yesterday as he drew a walk, appearing, or was hit by a pitch, rather, appearing as a pinch hitter. Brett Merrick, he really throws hard. Got a small frame, a real big guy, but he can bring it up there pretty quick. Trying to close out the victory. Move Washington within a game of Washington State and perhaps a game of Oregon State, depending on what the Beavers are doing against Portland State. Clint Brown and Troy Woodward throwing in the bullpen for Washington, should they be needed. Marquardt, a 200 average, three hits, 15 at bats. He's walked twice, has struck out four times, has no homers and one RBI. Trying to get on base yeah. any way he could that time, Dave. And yeah, Merrick was up to it. He was taking all the way. You notice Merrick was standing out there taking a couple deep breaths, get some clean, fresh oxygen into him, and it's a way to help him relax a little bit. He looks a little bit tense to me. 
not the easiest spot for a freshman no. to be put into. That's right. Marquardt getting a piece of that one and sending it straight back. That might have been ball four right there, Todd. Yeah, this is an exciting time for pitchers. Oh, look at that. There goes a rabbit. That's the second day in a row. We had, a, we had a rabbit out on the field yesterday, folks, interrupting play. So, squirted through, and uh, they had to give chase for a while before they finally managed to shoot him out via the Husky dugout area. Full count again for Mark Ward. There you go. Big strikeout right there on a sinking fastball by the left-hander Merrick. Watch the bottom fall out of this one. Watch this ball sink. What's that reaction by the catcher's glove right there? Shuey. That's a big one for the left-hander. Big strikeout. Big out. Well, Brent Merrick's faced two batters and struck them both out. Josh Hammock will step in now. Merrick appearing in his 11th game of the season. He started twice. Hammock walked and scored in the third, struck out on the fifth, popped to short in the seventh. Jeff Borges scheduled to follow. And a good looking pitch from Merrick. Those faith, faithful Husky fans that have stayed around there that are applauding, that should help Merrick out. Uh oh Toward left, Doty did not make the catch. The umpire says no. Doty starts to appeal, but then wisely decides he should return to the ball the infield first. Now Ken Knudsen will come out as well, and Phil Jordan is on the spot once again. Hmm. I don't know if I can get it to you guys. Well, the umpires are certain, certainly have uh, gotten the attention. We're going to get an opportunity. Now, remember, the umpires don't have the advantage that we do. Well, you, you're going to get a look at it here, and now you see if Doty comes up with it or not. Yep, that is a catch, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know. I, don't I, so? I was going to say, it looked like he might have pinned it against the grass a little bit, whether he had it completely in the glove. Tough I'll one to call. That yes, one looked like he might have it, so... Great effort by Doty. That Cougars first one, I thought he had the catch, but then it looked like he might have pinned the ball yeah. a little bit against. But the second one looked like he had glove underneath. So Hammock is standing on second base, nevertheless. And Borges will sit down now, it appears. Now the Cougars will be able to keep alive, at least bring up the tying run to the plate and you see Ron Namu swinging the bat stepping out who uh, may try to step in now for hammock or rather for Borges now move five nine sophomore Kaneohe Hawaii See his numbers for the season. 14 hits and 73 at bats. You almost wonder right now whether uh, the Cougars wish they had Nicholson back, who uh, stepped in and stepped out and was replaced by right. Miller, or had Miller back, one or the other in that situation. Now we started off with a strike. <coughs> Chad Amble is waiting on deck, but uh, again, he is scheduled to hit. One gone here in the top of the ninth. Upstairs to Naumu. Stuff. Of course, all Washington really has to do is keep anybody else from getting around. Yep. Hammock can close it to one, but he can't tie it or win it by himself. 
Merrick might give us ulcers here. If not us, perhaps it's coach. Yeah. So he wants to change baseballs right now. The rally stance for the Washington State dugout. To the right side of the infield, Jorgensen calling, and two gone. Well, that was a big one right there. Big out. Amble will sit down now. I was a little surprised, though, Todd, that Namu just stood there like he did. He never did even make an attempt to go down to first, had Jorgensen drop that. Backup catcher Jim Horner will hit for Amble now. Horner a 222 batting average, eight hits in 36 at bats. 5'11", 185 pound freshman from Twin Falls, Idaho. Topps award winner is the top amateur baseball player in the state of Idaho while he was in high school. Horner was 0 for 1 yesterday. Brett Merrick trying to close it out for Jamie Day. And Washington trying to make it two out of three over Washington State. Hammock at second. And a good looking pitch. We've seen some good solid pitching from mm -hmm. Washington today, Dave. Yeah, you can't say enough about the job that Jamie Day did. Now Merrick's trying to save it for him. Two and one for Horner. Mm. And it goes to three and one. Fans behind the home plate backstop. And you can also see Brett Merrick's reaction. They all wanted the strike call there as Merrick paces around the mound. Yeah, the Cougars need, need to get this man on. Make for a more exciting ball game. We've had a good one, though. And again, you think might have chased ball four, don't you? Yep. That's, uh, don't you? I got your look, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now down to the last strike now. That'll give a coach fits in a hurry, oh, yeah. guys. If you just uh, lay off it, we'd have about four or five more base runners this game. Yep. So full count now. Freshman against freshman, mm -hmm. and time called. Bobo Brayton will come down the line now one more time. And I don't know what he's going to do. He's going to holler at Horner. He was shouting as he walked down the line. Meanwhile, Jorgensen, the veteran, comes over from first base to go out to the mound, talk to his pitcher, and try to settle him. He says, don't let this rattle you. I'll tell you what Bobo's doing. He's trying to... Uh Make it just a little bit tougher on the freshman pitcher out there. He's just trying to make make the left-hander think just a little bit more. It's kind of like in uh, basketball when a guy goes up to the free throw line in a close ball game, they call timeout. A little psychological game going on right here. Full count pitch. Called strike three. Horner was headed down the line. Merrick gets the strikeout. His third in relief. He'll pick up the save. And Washington will pick up the victory for Washington State in the ninth. No runs on a hit, no errors, and one man left on base. The Huskies took five of six from Washington State last year. They make it two of three this weekend with a 6-4 victory over the Cougars. We'll be back to wrap things up right after this timeout on Prime Sports Northwest. Holy cow, a dragon cake that breathes safe, mysterious smoke. Jello that actually glows in the dark. Introducing the...